I uh, just got it up on live, just wait for people to start coming on. Right, I can see a few of you coming on now. Evening all the people that have come on so far. Lee Ashby here, Motocross and Speedway Memories. I'll just get my uh, thank yous out of the way. To I uh, reveal my special guest. Um, right. My big thanks for the support to Simon Pardo of White Eagle Finance. They give quality financial advice for pensions, mortgages, investments and protection. Check the website out at www.whiteeaglefinance.co.uk. Big thanks to the legend Stefan Everts with his S72 gin and vodka brand. Check out his amazing products out at www.s72gin.com. Also, big thanks to Lee Owen of Owen Developments. Uh, they specialize in supplying turbochargers to a global customer base, covering motorsport, performance aftermarket, and OEM sectors. Check them out on the shop side at www.owenturbos.com and also www.owendevelopments.co.uk. There's the uh, thank yous out of the way. Right then, people, I'm going to do... Uh, <laughs> Oh, Amanda Castagna's online. How's it going, Amanda? <laughs> I'll, I'll mention that question to her in a minute. Something about being grumpy, Per. <laughs> we've just been talking about the virus off air before we even come on, so we're already moaning. There we go. We've got that out of the way, haven't we, Per? <laughs> right, here we go then. Let's do the 30-second countdown. I might even need to do two of these. I've got so many things written down against this man. I might be doing an Eric Gunderson with the two. Two going. Right, here we go then. Right, let's try and get this in on the first 30 seconds, shall I? Here we go. Right, this man was world champion in 1990 at Bradford. Number two in the world in 1992. He is a former European under 21 champion, four times Swedish national champion, Czech golden helmet winner, three times Swedish final winner, British league riders champion, golden gala winner in Italy, golden bar winner in uh, Denmark, world pairs champion, Six times Swedish league champion, British league seat. I've not got enough time. I'm going to do another. Here we go. <laughs> Six times Swedish league champion, British league fours winner, two time British league champion, two time Premiership winner, BSBA Cup winner, British league knockout cup winner, and Swedish and Regin Reddin races legend, of course, Mr. Per. Johnson. What a man this man is. Here we go. I'm going to bring him in. Here we go. Per Johnson. What an amazing thing to get you on. I really appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Nice How to be are here. you? I'm not too bad. Uh, in the situation, everything is, it's, well, it's just that it is. You have to just be careful and make sure you go through all that shit. Yeah. It's not been good, mate. Uh, we did have a little moan about that offer. <laughs> yeah. Like everyone is, but there we go. So hopefully we're getting into better times. Hopefully that we can get rid of that and people can start planning some things in the new year. Be good. Yeah. Right there, it looks like your old mate Amanda Castagna's come on. <laughs> he, he's, uh, he got a quick question in straight away on YouTube. He put, I would like to know, oh, actually, I'll bring it up on the screen because I can do that as well. Look, there we go. There he is. I would like to know why he was such a grumpy person before becoming world champion and then he became the nicest guy in the world why love you, Amanda? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, that's was grumpy, yeah. <laughs> well, go into it too much though when I was racing. It's just that. So uh, afterward, you could relax a bit more. And I mean, I we had. I mean, first time I met Amanda, I think it was in uh, Rovno in Russia, and um, I think they had a bit of a battle in the in the corner there and. I took him quite wide and then <laughs> with the Swedish mafia, but it was the other way around. <laughs> no. Did he not did he not appreciate that per? No, not much, but um after that we became really good friends and uh, I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing him soon though. It's 
been down to him quite often and that to see him and that so and his son Paco as well and the whole family uh, yeah, I'm hopefully going to speak to Paco as well, because he did uh, message me not long ago. He was quite inspired with my uh, Stefan Everts interview. So uh, I yeah. will try and get Paco on. That'd be quite cool to speak to him. He seems like a fun guy as well. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll do that. Right, I've got another question here off of YouTube as well. Come from Skip Donahue Productions. He said he couldn't wait for the interview. He's put, who was Per's engine tuner for his world final win? So I'm presuming 90 Bradford, isn't it? Yeah, well, it was Jan Anderson. I mean, he, he had such a good equipment in England. And uh, yeah. the way he did, I asked him for many years if he could, you know, help me out and do an engine for me. And um, so that year, 90, uh, when I switched over from Java he, uh, to, to GMs, and uh, he took the engine and he, he did a few things with it. And uh, big difference and it was so nice to ride and uh, after that Jan was helping me you know tuning my engines and that so he was he's, he was very good with the bikes obviously um didn't you uh per I know you obviously uh I knew I think you knew my uncle Martin Ashby quite well didn't you yeah yeah well Martin helped me out a lot when I was in England I went down to to Marlborough there and they okay. you know serviced my engines and that and the uh, now Martin is really good bloke, and uh, we had a lot of talks and that down when he was working with my engine, and he came out to Reading as well, and you know for a few races and that. So now he's he's a really good bloke. Okay, that was brilliant. So that was good times as well. Then I remember seeing a, I think I sent you a picture once, didn't I? Um, a picture of you and Martin. I think Martin was on the bike. I think it was a Golden Greats meeting on your bike at Reading. I think it was. Yeah. 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 Good memories there. I've got quite yeah. a few people coming in with some nice messages already saying Per Jonsson, a, su a Speedway superstar. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, yeah. Amando, come, Amando come back and said, I still have the scars on my leg from Rovno <laughs> in Russia. <laughs> no. oh. yeah. Amando's not letting that go. <laughs> no. no, no, I was still here from that about that though quite often, but. Um... No, he's like a brother now. I mean, he, he's been helping me a lot after my injury and that stuff. So, I mean, he, such a good friend. You can't have any better. Yeah, that's, brilliant. that's great then. Great to have you on, Amanda Castagna. Actually, I'd love to get uh, you on an interview as well, Amanda. So you, I'll yeah. get in contact with you and we'll do that as well. That would be a good one. So, uh, yeah, great to have, see him on there. Uh, right, I've got uh, Thomas Nielsen on YouTube. He's put high per. Uh, is it true that you rode the Speedway bike, the last bit to the World Cup qualifier in Hagfors, is that pronounced, since your van stopped? Yeah, well, my granddad and I, we went from uh, Gothenburg. My mom and dad was living down there. Mm -hmm. And um, he had an old Mercedes, and we had the bike on the rack in the back. And uh, the water pump broke on it. So okay. we, we stopped and filled water in it and just kept going. It was qualifying for the Swedish final. So uh, we I haven't been to Hogfors before, so we didn't know where the track was. So, And then in the end, he said, we have to go because we were late. And that time you didn't have mobile phones, so you could phone up or mm -hmm. tell them I was late. So uh, yeah. anyway, we came into Hogfors and all of a sudden the car just stopped. And I changed, I put my leathers on and everything and it lift the bike out, out of the rack there and then pushed out and I just went on on the on the road and I, I knew it was somewhere up in the woods there. So I was driving and looking up at the woods there trying to see where it was. And then I drove up and then they already started the meeting and I came up there uh, with the bike up to the gate and I asked them to let me in. So I came in and then I ran up to the referee and asked him if I could do I missed my first two races. If I could do my last three, so I could do the meeting. So I won my last three meetings, uh, races, and then um, wow. just qualified for a reserve that, that year. Bloody hell. So that was a bit of a story there then. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I can imagine someone seeing Perry Johnson coming up, full, fully kitted up with a bike up to the pit. Yeah. I'm a race <laughs> and everything. Was oh, ready. that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I'd love to have seen that. 
Right, I got uh, another one here. I got uh, Sebastian Zyrek. I'm trying to pronounce that if that's right. How did you get into the Polish league, and what are your best memories from Poland, Per? Oh, there's so many memories. Mm, I imagine uh, it was after the ninety that uh, they opened the league in Poland uh, for foreign riders in ninety one, mm -hmm. and uh, I met up in uh, Kumla in Sweden. It mm -hmm. was uh, Hedvig, a uh, Polish woman. It was, I think, it was she was probably seventy then, but like an iron lady and uh, she she spoke Swedish and that and, and uh, a few people from Torun came up and we well we talked and I signed for Torun that year so it was um, quite an experience to come to Poland I mean it, it changed so much from 89 mm. and now they I mean the technology and everything there in Poland now is a different country yeah, it's, it's pretty uh it's, it's pretty much the number one in speedway now to be in poland isn't it yeah yeah it is it's grown a lot if you were uh, did you i don't know if you're aware of the rule where they're sort of uh poland are trying to impose a rule where uh, you can only ride in one other league as well as poland what's your did you know about that and what's your thoughts about that well i've heard that but um mm. they can't well the thing is the money is in poland that's that's where most of the riders own their money. So, I mean, they can they, they tell the riders, if you want to ride here, just ride here. That's that's mm. how it is. But, uh, I mean, they got the crowd, they got everything there. So it's, yeah. um, but the thing is to stop, I mean, more and more before, like we, we rode so many meetings. I mean, I did about 110, 115 meetings. Yep. And it's not the same as it is today that you have four mechanics you have to work on your bikes yourself and yeah drive when you could and i mean it, it's a big difference so but now when they when you earn a bit more than you did when when i was riding so it's easier to to plan and do everything like that so but um yeah it's hard hard to stop it mm. it's the talks though yeah, they're the main main people in the sport now, aren't they? So I suppose yeah. that to a degree they sort of hold the cards, as it were. Yeah, yeah so, uh, right, we've got uh, Stephen Zetterwall here. He's put, hi, Per Johnson, nice to hear and see from you. My hero from Getagana, is that how you pronounce it, Per? How do you pronounce yeah. that? Getagana, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's been involved with Speedo as long as I remember. So yeah. he's a keen supporter and he's... From Smeda and Eskilstuna there, and he's a nice bloke, and they he's trying to do as much as he can for the Swedish Speedway as well. So good that's bloke. really good. What is Speedway uh, Speedway like in Sweden at the moment, Per? Do you know? What's that it, like? It's not it's not good at the moment, though. Mm. Mean, I mean, it, it's been since they opened the league. I mean, we mm. don't have any riders to to fit in in the team, and yeah. it's hard to rec recruit the the younger boys because it's hard for them to get in and if they come in and ride one meeting if they don't do any good they change them and that so they don't have any ability in you know to ride if they spend a lot of money on the bikes and equipment and everything and then if they can't ride it's um, they can't afford to do it so more and more younger boys are quitting so it's a different story now than when they can pick up young polish riders coming over and i mean it, it's not greener on the other side so it's it's a bit sad really yeah that, that way um someone's making comments about i normally always wear a hat over forwards generally backwards <laughs> and someone's going get you, someone's put get your hat on lee so they're obviously not happy about me showing my hair <laughs> yeah. Even though I just got it cut by my lovely uh, stepdaughter Jessica Stag, so. All oh, right, going up there. <laughs> so I thought I'd actually get my hair out, but apparently that's not good for the crowd. So, <laughs> right, I got uh, Martin Woodhead here off of um, Facebook. He's put, "Hi, Per, what a legend! Did you like the Bra uh, the Bradford track as a race circuit itself?" I loved it. It was, uh, I mean, the banking and and the dirt on the banking, track. Yeah. Mm. And the, the thing is, I mean, I when I started, I didn't have the equipment to to ride bigger tracks because I didn't have engines to to make it right for it. So 
but in the end, I mean, it's, I mean, that, that night at Bradford when I won it, oh. I, I just could, kept on riding and riding. It was, the track was so nice, nice and smooth and a lot of dirt and the banking there, it's, you can do so much from behind as well. If you miss the start, you can find all sort of lines and that on it. So it's, no, it's, it's a really nice track. I don't know if you remember, I think it was your first race, it must have been. Um, obviously, everyone in the British League would follow their home riders, etc. Obviously, everyone loved Per Johnson. But being a Swindon fan, obviously, being born and bred in Swindon, I was sort of following Jimmy Nielsen, obviously. <laughs> and in that first race, I remember Jimmy making a great gate and uh, you sort of pretty much stalked him for the four laps and then uh, did a beautiful move. I think it was the last corner, wasn't it? I'm going to cut back. Yeah. And yeah. It, was, it was a beautiful pass. It's and as you passed over the line, I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> it was no, great. I loved Swindon track. It was yeah. such a nice thing to ride on. And I was on my way to, I mean, I think it was after 85, I think I was put on transfer and um, to go to, to Swindon, but I had to put too much wow. transfer fee on me, so they couldn't afford to do it. So. Wow, so you were actually on your way to Swindon at one point. Yeah, it was. Uh, oh. We had a bit of a argument there. I mean, Pat was like a mother to me, really. I, when I came over to England in '84, I I was living down at Pat's place. So, but so um, now we had a bit of a dispute there over the winter, and so. Oh, damn, imagine this day and age, we could have had social media on it. We'd have all been putting in the money to pay for you to come over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn, I can't believe that we nearly had Perry Johnson. Wow, that's killed me there. <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, right, I got, uh, oh, Brian Butterfield's come on. Per, and has put say hello to the main man for me. Hi there, Brian. I hope you're okay. Yeah, he's, um, he's been with me for a long time, though. I mean, I... I haven't had many mechanics. I mm -hmm. they've been with me all the time, and uh, yeah. I mean, I my mechanics are like I mean, they are my my brothers. I mean, it's, it's like a family, and to work like that when you ride in that much, and you need to have someone you can trust. And uh, I had Brian and um, Balla, my Swedish mechanic, and my school friend. I mean, we went from seventh grade follow my mechanic and uh, he's been with me all the time and um, same with Brian when he came on he, he's been I mean done such a good job on my bikes and everything so yeah good book. How did you uh, get into Speedway uh, Per and what was your earliest memory of the actual sport? Well I was I was riding motocross when I oh, right. yeah I in Sweden you can started to compete until you were 12 years old yeah so i was on uh, 50cc motocross and i was riding well i had my bike for when i was three and you know i had all sorts of bikes and that <laughs> coming up and um i was quite tiny when i was younger so it's Pleasure. and the 50cc bikes they were like 125 cc that big bigger wheels went to one in front and 18 in the back so wow was um so i was riding motocross and till i was third, 14. did you and, enjoy that yeah yeah well i i did not too bad i was sixth in in swedish final uh, over the year oh, the right. and um but it was expensive mm. i mean 50 c the bikes on the sand and everything i mean it, I don't know how many engines we blew up in that. And uh, my dad is comes from Gotland, the, the island there where mm -hmm. Tori Harrison, Christy Lerquist and all lot of riders. So he, Speedway was his interest really. I mean, I remember when I was seven, from seven or eight, I went to Speedway and went, watched that. And mm -hmm. I thought it was boring, watching them go <laughs> around on the track. Yeah. So I was my interest. I was playing around, and he was watching Speedway. Yeah. Anyway, so he he bought a frame, a 50 cc frame, and uh, we just took the engine from the motocross bike and put it in that one, and uh, went to try it out. And I mean, I did half season 
84. And sorry, what was it when I was when I was 14? Yeah, the mm -hmm. half season that I did there, and um, I was easy. I mean, four riders into the corner when you've been riding motocross, so 30 yeah. riders first mm -hmm. corner. So mm -hmm. I wasn't scared, so a lot of them were scared of me when I, I just went in the corner. I wasn't so, <laughs> and um, no, it kept going from there, and uh. I did the, the season after that when I was 15. I uh, won the Swedish final on 50 CC as well there. Peter Nolly was... Peter Nolly, yeah. Third, I think, and uh, Jürgen Johansson. So some of the, a lot of riders, I mean, we stuck together for a long yeah. time, a Swedish team and that we rode against Denmark and that. So yeah, that's, that's how it all started. Ah, very interesting. I got uh, James Monster Brown on Facebook. He's put, "Do you still see Tony Rickardson at all?" I see him time to times, so and uh, when at the speeder track and that, and yeah. sometimes you know talking on the phone, but it's not that much though these days. But um, speak to him on and off. You had some good uh, race times, uh, racing times with uh, obviously Tony as well. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, giving some sticks uh, in the beginning when he was having these pink bikes and that, and like the <laughs> friends. And uh, when we were in Australia, I gave him <laughs> sticks, but now he's a good bloke. He's, uh, he's a he's really entrepreneur, though. He's yeah. put the sport forward quite a lot, and uh, yeah, he's a um, really good bloke. Uh, we've got a lot of nice comments still coming in. Um, right, I've got uh, A Fuller here on YouTube. Put evening per the greatest Reading racer I have ever watched, and still the small mead track record holder. Do you recall going twenty to twenty one heats unbeaten at small mead? I think it was one year though when I had to. I think um, when I had to win the um, the average that year. Yeah. And, uh, I think I had to, I think with five races, I had to do four or five maximums or something to do it. And uh, I did it even one more point than I had to have to win it. So it was it was a good year. Yeah. So it, was, it was very cool to uh, have, obviously, the last track record at Reading as well. That was quite nice. Yeah, I still remember that race, though, with yeah. Tom Hudson. And the track was, I mean, it. We didn't even slide in the corners. It was like going on rails. Ah, uh, like, yeah, yeah. I made the start in the first heat. And uh, now I still remember that one, though. Very so, nice memory. Very nice. Yeah. Um, right, I've got Nathan Mondays. Per, per, when you first came to England, was there a certain rider or anyone that uh, took you under their wings? I know you got on with Martin Ashby, Lee's uncle, which we mentioned earlier, but was there any other, was there riders that sort of helped you out and settled in to England when you came over? Well, it, it, it all started the first year when I came up to 500 in Sweden. Mm -hmm. I made it to the Swedish final, so, uh, and uh, I think I finished fourth or fifth in the senior class there, and uh, Jan Andersson was there, and after the meeting, he... Uh, came up to me that when, when I was ready, because you had to be 18 to go to England then. And uh, he said, when you're ready, I, I will see if I can find your place at Reading. So um, that year, I think it was 83, winter 83, yeah. me and Corbin Harrison and uh, Pali, my, my mechanic and um, my friend, we went over in the winter there to see Jan and uh, went over to meet up with Pat Bliss and um, just negotiated the contract. And um, so um, that's how I came over. And then obviously Jan was, he was a bit, I mean, <laughs> but he, he's a special person though, but he helped <laughs> quite a lot. You know, if I had needed to, he always gave me some advices and that in the beginning. So it's, yeah. That's, was it was it quite good? Was it quite good for you, Per? Because obviously at Reddit it was quite well known. You had quite a lot of Swedish guys there. You had uh, obviously Jan Andersson, and I remember Tony Olsen, and then guys. What was was that good as well? Obviously, yeah. It was Jan and Pierre Branafors? Was that 
that year in 84 and uh, mm-hmm. it helped out quite a lot though, to have them in the team and me and Pierre, I mean, we teamed up really good. So it was, and it, at the same, I mean, in in Swindon, I was living in Swindon there, in Highworth. Oh so, yeah, Highworth. I didn't know that. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I same I, with Malcolm Holloway. I mean, I was Peter Glance was living at Pat's place as well. Yeah. So, but uh, I went and see saw Holloway quite a lot when I was there. So. He was a big influence as well. I mean, I, he took me around and you know, in Swindon and that, I met up all the all the folks there. And then mm-hmm. Jim was supposed to ride that year as well, the '84, but he um, can't remember if it was the work permit or if he we had problems coming in though to to ride in England that year mm-hmm. to with the work permit and that. So, um, yeah. That's how we well ended up at Reading, though. So, it's... did you have a just mentioning Jimmy Nielsen there? Did you had a quite a good uh, close relationship with Jimmy Nielsen. Yeah, we still. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, me and Jimmy, we we well, we were inseparable. That like, really, yeah. when we started in Getting Gone there in '82, uh, we were together all the time. I mean, we well, he came over to my place there in Stockholm. He was living just. Well, an hour from where I live, so we met out in the winter and we trained a lot together. And so, I mean, when we came to England first year, we were supposed to stay together. There. And then in '85, he came over. He wrote to Swindon, so we we renting houses together and living together all the time. So, yeah. So it must have been, it must have been very cool to be so close mates and then end up being like proper, uh, really good of the international riders for Sweden and yeah. quite ironic that you were at rival clubs but <laughs> it's when yeah but we rode for the same day getting gone in Sweden yeah yeah sounds good it, it's not we never a rival I mean obviously you want to be each other and that so mm-hmm. good inspiration I mean giving the other one a stick when 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 you beat <laughs> that, so but you <laughs> often rode really good around ready mm. and the opposite you know he rode good there and I rode good at Swindon. So, mm. but um, now they be still good friends and you know, keep in touch. That's great. That's nice. I'm going to get Jimmy on as well. Obviously, and yeah. uh, got Adam Winslet. Uh, he has put watching you at Reading, you seem to make it look easy. Did you find riding easy and did it come naturally to you? Good question. Well, I, always, I mean, I when I first came over to England, I mean, I I didn't care what contract I got. I mean, it, <laughs> you get paid to ride, to ride yeah. speed. I mean, the, mo- the the thing that I love the most, mm-hmm. because you get paid for doing what you love doing. So it's, um, now riding a motorcycle, it, I mean, I I just loved, I, I could, I like motocross quite a lot. I mean, I, even in the winter time, I always try to ride a bit motocross. And my uncle, it started off really when, when I was a kid, my uncle Torf Hansen, mm-hmm. when he, I went up to my grandmother and that, he had his bike and up there and he was, well, I was a bit scared of him though, because he was quite <laughs> hard in that to you, but uh, <laughs> and, um, he only came second in the world. And I always got a lot of stick from him when I was, started to ride speedway, he said, ah, you weak, you can't ride more across like, Speedway, you know, <laughs> wankers, but you know, <laughs> so, um, but <laughs> I, I, we had the first one I called after I won the world final. I called him up, <laughs> Did you? <laughs> number one, and you're number two. So he's, <laughs> That's brilliant. Hats off, and you know, congratulate me and everything. But, um, yeah, I let him try the speedway bike as well. I took up oh. to the field cc track we had there and not far from where we live and i learned out my bikes in the winter time and let all the boys you know riding the bike there and then um, he always had problems he said the foot rest the foot peg is is too far back and he didn't know where to put the feet and everything <laughs> we, we looked had, a bit awkward did they <laughs> yeah we had some good times though yeah that's really cool that's very cool uh right i got sebastian zirek he's put 
uh, on YouTube. What do you uh, What do you think? Is it possible for Bartosz Smarzlik uh, to get more world championships? No, oh, he's going to have some more. He's going to have a uh, quite a few of them. I mean, he's the natural on the bike. To see him riding on the bike is like w watching ballet or something. I mean, the way he he works around on his bike. I mean, you see most of the riders they they're stuck in one place. When you look at Bartos, I mean, mm. the way he is on the bike, it's sometimes. I mean, today they're they're riding really at the end. I mean, I, there's no margin at all when they're riding today. So it's a fair play to them. But I mean, uh, it is when when they crash, they crash hard, and mm. they're lucky to have the the safe defense they have now. Though, but yeah, Athens, yeah. Not really an insurance. I mean, you can hurt yourself there as well. So yeah, but uh, now nah, Bartos is is such a natural on the bike. Mm. Quite exciting to watch. Yeah, it is. It's nice mm. to, to see him ride. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, what riders did you have? Any riders that you used to look up to when you were young, Per, and why? And did you ever get to race any of your heroes' idols? They didn't have well. It was my uncle. I mean, he was my, and I had um, my dad's friend. His sons. I have you know, we were together when they built bikes and that for us mm -hmm. when we were kids, like yeah, when yeah. Were three, four or five years old, and we were playing around, you know, riding that out in the country and that. And um, he was he's. Um, He's four years older than me, and I looked up to him as well, trying to beat him when he was out training. I was out training, so I started off really when I was seven or eight. I was out running with him, and I, I mean, trained quite a, quite a lot. With, I mean, there was nothing else for me than riding a motorbike. Back uh, when you were obviously even when you was in your prime racing speedway, did you do a lot of training? You said mentioned that you did in the winter a bit of motocross to keep fit and do stuff. Did you do a lot of training in general? Yeah. Well, I I think I I was in the winter time. I was running five five days a week. Wow. I was out running and doing not much gym. Mm. I did I did the normal thing at home. You know what you do arm arm bending and all that stuff. You no, know, to keep me fit. But running was quite what you had to do to keep up doing what you do. I mean, you need to be physically all right, but you have to psych see up in your head as well, to be clear. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. So it's, I think that's the main key though. Most, most of today, more and more are training a bit, but mm. see from the top riders, from the other riders, if you're not serious enough to do what you wanted to do. So it's, mm. I see obviously a lot of the riders and a lot of sportsmen, women, sportsmen and women these days sort of uh, get into the mental side of things and stuff and yeah, and all that sort of part as well. Did you always, was you always headstrong anyway yourself? Just obviously racing, you did obviously, you were successful. So. Yeah, well, it, to ride, I had my, um, I think it was eight year, world final 88. Mm -hmm. That year, I, I mean, everything went really good i was scoring i won the golden helmet and the uh, golden goal in italy and you know everything was that year was a really good year and uh, mm. i had a chance you now to be on the rostrum at the world final 88 and audience but i got excluded in my first race there it was three restarts i mean Jano and hans i knew they were gonna tangle into mm. the first corner i was on gate four and i just turned around I, i've been I mean, I that time when it was a world final, I went through every race about 100, 200 times, every race, and I was winning the race every time. Mm. And um, I didn't, I didn't realize you could get second, but in my head, I won all the races. Mm. So when I got excluded there in the first race, I just everything. I just, I mean, all the the thing that I've been inside of me you know yeah. all exploded and i mean from that on it, it was hard to concentrate I, I think i ended up fifth or something anyway but mm. it was that that didn't work so 
I think after that, I started to do a bit of psychology and, you know, trying to do the mantle stuff and that. Mm -hmm. and, um, so that year when I won it in 90 there, I, I mean, I planned, I could, I could get second in one race and I could plan it in different way. And mm -hmm. so the mental stuff is so important though to, I mean, I, I still have that today, mm -hmm. a lot of knowledge about it. And yeah. I think it, it helped me as well after my injury and that. Mm -hmm. So it makes a bit, you know, how to handle stuff and that. So it's, Yeah, uh, mentally, yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you, um, obviously, that night that you obviously won the final, you obviously had to go into a runoff as well. What was your, you had to be, obviously, another thing on both mental strength and stuff. But did you, uh, what did that, what was that like? What was the feeling going into that runoff with Sean Moran and the nerves? Yeah, obviously, must have been a bit there. Yeah, well, I already won it before we went out to the tapes because when we went out and did a toss, me uh -huh. and Sean, and we uh, toss and he, he won. And, um, so he took the outside because the outside was better, really. But um, and then we shook hands and, and he said, at least you get a second place, he said to me. Then I knew already I won. I didn't want to get second. So I, I was mentally stronger than him in that way. So it's, so it's um, yeah, I wasn't that nervous, though. It, it, I just was so pissed off in that race when I got beaten by him. And I really told them that. So it's, I made a mistake in the first corner, but well, looking back at it, it turned out okay anyway. Um, yeah. Did that almost sort of make you sort of fired up for that runoff, thinking I'm 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 winning this? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Like Sean said when we shook hands, he said, yeah. "At least you get a second place," and I wasn't there to get second, so yeah, yeah, really satisfied by being second. Yeah. Yeah. What was that feeling like uh, when you, because you were quite far ahead of him in general in that race, and you sort of stretched out a bit? That must have been a sp special feeling when you went over the line. Yeah, it was. I mean, uh, you see all the memories. I mean, uh, yeah, everything you've been training for, everything you've done. I mean, I the the things that you've been having in your head since I was nine, ten years old to be a world champion. I, every, every time I was out running, when I was training, I saw the picture in front of me all the time and then on and on and on. And when that, just before I went over the, the finish line, I mean, the goosebumps in my back, it was, <laughs> it's just, it's hard to, to grab it, but it was surreal. It was, I mean, a brilliant fun. Yeah. Awesome memories. We'll go through some of them pictures in a bit. Um, got a uh, Wayne Chamberlain here. He's put a question from Per. Who was your favourite riding partner at Reading? So I presume he means team riding. Yeah, well, Dave Mullet and maybe had such a good. Oh race. yeah, Dave Mullet. Yeah, I mean, they, they call him English Steel. I mean, he <laughs> was tough as any any. I I remember that. Yeah. I mean, we we did he. He stuck, he gave really good that year, and it was easy to to pick him up and you know trying to to do the best of everything. And um, sometimes you have to take out someone in the first corner, let him come in. And I mean, we talked a lot to how to plan the race. You have yeah. to you know to do all that stuff. And I remember, I can't remember who it was, it was from Bradford. Uh, I missed the gate, and um, Dave sort of saw that, so he. He took him out quite wide, so I sneaked <laughs> on the inside, and we took a five-one. And then I can't remember what the name was on it. He came up to Dave and gave him a lot of shit. You know, Did it? In that. And then Dave comes up to me and says, "Hey, I don't understand. You do that all the time. No one comes up to you and scream and saying stuff." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, uh, you can uh, grab it that that someone could, you know. Give him a lot of bollocks, uh, but no, it, no one came up to me when I did it. So it's, <laughs> it was a good though. I mean, we had it was easy team riding, with him, so yeah, was, yeah, we are. yeah. I remember Dave. When he didn't he used to be a bit of a farmer or something as well, didn't he? Yeah, Is that right? yeah. yeah. Cheap, cheap farmer. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. 
that's brilliant. I remember Dean right well. Um, yeah. Right, that was a cool memory. Uh, Mike Wilson from Facebook, he's put uh, Hyper. You had a unique upright style that allowed you to get the wheels in line quickly and generate tremendous speed. Did you develop the style mainly due to your height? Well, I mean, I I never tried a lay down, but um, mm. ride the bike. I always used the throttle, and um, I mean, I always someone asked me what to do. Now, you know, trying to go up in the dirt and then ride a wave. Like I said, you go up, and then you go as hard as you can into it, and then go up on the dirt, and then mm. all of a sudden you just grab it and it's quicker to to go wheel instead of sliding too much so it's sometimes i mean i i just let the bike run when i went into the dirt and mm -hmm. i just let it go and then see where it wanted to go and sometimes you start thinking shit here comes the fence but um, <laughs> it's just to, to, it was easy to ride a bike really for me it, it's yeah so but the heights didn't help me a lot though I, I hated small tracks like Arena SX and Bellevue, the new track, the small track there. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that one. I mean, I you come into the corner, you meet yourself in the corner. There. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about Eastbourne? What about Eastbourne Pearl? <laughs> well, he was all right, as long as it yeah. dirt. And, and you get out wider, yeah. Yeah, you can hit the dirt. And, but uh, no, Eastbourne was okay. It was not bad, but... Irene Essex and that with long straights and come in and then yeah, you drive around and see the other ones coming in the corner, like like you're meeting them in the corner. So it's, no, I, I like the track a bit with a bit more dirt that you can mm. sort of do something. And struggling mm. with my long legs and that when it was too tight. Hmm. So who was your, was obviously, obviously you like Reading track, was uh, you mentioned you liked Swindon. Was there any others you liked in the British League or? Um, as as long as it was, you know, a bit of dirt on, on the track, yeah. you can ride it and that. But um, some of the favourites, I mean, like Reading, I, I knew inside out. I mean, it, mm. track there, I just loved it. You know? I mean, because they they watered a lot and a lot of dirt in the beginning. Obviously, all the tracks in England, so much clay in it. And mm. at the end of the meeting, it was really slick and hard. But... Mm. Uh, in the beginning when it's a right really deep and that i love that so it's mm. so it's more do you think it's more it's pretty much uh as a racer yourself you sort of more in the preparation even say so more than the track itself sometimes yeah i mean mm. i the tracks i mean if, if they sometimes it's it's not fair for for the other if it's a track if you just made the gate you can't do anything from behind but as long as it is something to ride in, it's more fair for the riders, I reckon. So it's mm. but, um, yeah, definitely much better for racing in the crowd and in the sport. Yeah. Um, I've got a name, no, no name on this one. They didn't register, but they put hyper. I remember a report that some scumbag robbed you on your way out of a hotel in Reading when you returned after your injury. Do you, did you ever get your stuff back? And were they caught? No, true? no, it was uh, all the way took us over for the last meeting there well it was 20 years after I took the track record I think it was mm -hmm. and uh, they had a meeting there as well at, at Reading and uh, on the way when we were lifting from the wheelchair over to the car and that mm -hmm. and uh, my wife and she left her bag in that on the side and someone nicked the bag when, when we were doing all that so it's no, nothing happened there Crazy, crazy. Uh, got Simon Corbett. Uh, per, did you enjoy coming to Cradley to ride? Yeah, I mean, Cradley was a funny. I mean, the track doesn't look any particular, but it was quick. That track, I mean, it was felt like you you were going on like a Bradford track because it was such a high tempo on, on that track, and uh, it was difficult. I didn't well. We went up there and did the league meetings and that, but um, I, it was a special track and a good home track, I reckon. And uh, but when you start to learn it, it, it was quite nice. It was same Colin Pratt there. I mean, he mm. he walked 
the track really hard there as well mm. from the beginning. And um, no, I enjoyed it. it. It was a good track. That's good. Uh, we have mentioned this uh, in an answer, but I will mention the person anyway. Ivan Shears here, but per oh, yeah. great to see. Great to see you and looking so well. And he put, who is your favourite teammate at Reading? But we've already mentioned uh, Dave Muller. But the I team, just thought... the, the, the whole team, I I think it was in 92, it was the best team ever. I mean, it, yeah. we didn't really go out of the changing room. We, we had so much fun, you know, in, mm. there. And um, they had to come and scream at us to come out. It was time for it. <laughs> so much fun, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, we was a really good team then, and uh, we had good fun. And we didn't have particularly the best team in the league there, '92, yeah. but uh, we had such a good relationship, all of us in the team there. Amando, Donkey, Dave, uh, Phil, Tony was there. Um, I, it, it was a great team, all of us. Uh, we had uh, such a good time. I mean. Yeah. Everyone helped each other. I mean, coming in off the races, mm -hmm. no one stood in the corner, but everyone was there to to help. And um, no, it was a good, good, good year. That's nice, isn't it, to get the team camaraderie and everything. That makes a big difference for you guys, doesn't it? Enjoying it, and obviously, yeah, it does. I mm. uh, got another high per from uh, Karen Price. She was Karen Piner, by the looks of it. She's put high per as well. I got uh, John Westwood uh, on YouTube. Did you ever practice on the ice, uh, the frozen lakes, like a few other the Swedish riders? Did you ever do that, Per? Um, I was going to do it. I think it was when I was seventeen or something. Mm -hmm. My dad and uh, his brother had a bobcat, and I was going to take the snow off the off the ice, and uh, mm -hmm. they went out and tried to do, it. and they. They went through the ice with the machine and everything. So I think I just tried it once, but uh, I rode I, I rode motocross instead in the winter time. So, yeah. yeah, I prefer the the motocross. That was good. Um, oh, it was a nice one. Yeah, I'm glad he put his name because it didn't register on his profile. So I'm glad he put his name. It looks like Mr. Ronnie Corey. Yeah. He's put. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed his interview. He put. Good evening, Per. What a legend. Had many a battle at Reading and World Finals and qualifying rounds together. I really enjoyed. Yeah, good bloke, Ronnie. Always laughing and uh, yeah, a good good bloke. And uh, we had some battles, and they uh, always tough to beat. Though is as soon as he got in front, it was hard to catch him. Yeah, very fast, very quick gator as well. Nice to see you on, Ronnie. Thanks very much for coming on. Uh, my old mate, Mr. Brian Burford. Nice to see Brian on. Hi. He's put, uh, with the Danes winning so much throughout the 80s, was there a lot of rivalry between the Swedish and Danish riders at that time to be the best Scandinavians? Uh, I think we, in the 80s, the Danes were so, they were too tough. I mean, we were started, we, we started to come up really young, I mean, us, it was Jimmy, Tony, uh, Nolan, there were so many young riders and uh, uh, we started to develop and getting better and better in the end of the 80s, but the Danes was too tough. I mean, they, they, I think they're about five or six years ahead of us from the 80cc or 50cc. Everyone was riding that in the beginning and uh, we started in the eight is there i think we won against the danes first time in the team denmark sweden so mm -hmm. I think we, from there on we started to develop quite a lot of young kids coming up and it took us a while to to get up there but now that we had a hard time though to to do something with the danes in the 80s mm. they were very powerful at that time weren't they but uh did, was the uh, was there a lot of was there any much rivalry between you Swedish guys because you were as well as we mentioned the Danes were stacked with riders through that era that you rode in uh, the Swedish teams were very stacked you could have had two or three teams in the test matches you had a very very uh, a lot of strength and depth in the Swedish speedway was there a lot of rivalry between you guys as well or was that not really the case or no, not really I mean it's not mm. rivalry because all of us really that that came up there was. Mm -hmm. uh, Riding 50 cc together, and yeah, so you're more friends as well. Yeah, 
Yeah. And uh, obviously, it, <laughs> well, it, everyone was trying to, if I could help anyone, I, I helped anyone. So same for everyone else. So it, yeah. it's, um, no, I don't think it was any rivalry. It, it's, uh, I think maybe a team against team, like getting Ghana was really good there in the 80s mm. Mm. as well. Um, so that that was a bit in between, but not riders in between. Mm -hmm. um, I see Jason Colthorpe on Facebook. He's put, uh, did you enjoy having Jeremy Doncaster and Amanda Castagna as teammates? And any stories to tell? <laughs> Oh, there's so many. Um, I remember Donkey, Doncaster, when they in the dressing rooms and stuff, and they, you know, we said, I, I bought some trapping gloves today. I, you know, we had all sort of, I mean, Armando in the dressing room taking all this, um, what do you call it, to when you put some heat when you're on your, if you're, what the fuck is it called? Um, not Tiger Balsam, but... Uh, oh, I know. You're about Rail Jacks or something, was it? Yeah, something like that. It was something so like that, yeah. Something. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no. Yeah, we had we had a good time. I was... Uh, and Donkey was always... I mean, he, he was a character, and he, mm. he he kept the spirit up really good in the team. There's so many of these guys I need to speak to. I've, I've spoke to uh, Donkey, and he said he would, so he's another one I need to speak to. There's so many... Yeah. So much fun speaking to these guys. It's been unbelievable. Yeah, yeah so there's more great stories to tell there. Um, Jeanette, Jeanette Hubbard has put, yes, Dave is still farming, not far from me in Kent. So it looks like Dave's yeah. still doing the farming. Yeah. <laughs> I think he started off, though. He helped an old lady that with her sheep and stuff. And I think he inherited or something from her from that. But, um, yeah, he's... It's good. It's good to hear. It's good uh, a couple of these guys have not registered their names. Someone's put, I'm at football tonight, but I will watch it tomorrow. Best wishes to the greatest racer ever. Uh, yeah. Another one here, did not register their name, but it's put, hello, Per. Do you remember when we raced to Heathrow and found your wallet in the middle of the road? So maybe you might know who that is. Um, I raced to Heathrow. We've done that quite a couple of times. He's put, you found your wallet in the middle of the road, look. What's that? Do you remember that? No. Um, but I remember we, me and Jimmy, we were going back to Sweden. We woke up, I think my plane was going quarter past eight or something, and we woke up quarter to seven up in uh, Wooden Bastard. So we jumped in the car, and I, I made a flight. So um, <laughs> You've had some rushes there. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> more hard shoulders in places it, than traffic. It might, it might actually be Jimmy that met, mentioned it. He's been on a couple of times before, uh, so it could be Jimmy that said that. If it yeah. is, hi to you, Jimmy. I have to get you on. One of my favourites at Swindon. Yeah. Um, I've got a good one here. Keith, uh, Keith uh, Brewerton is put, uh, I was washing my car one Sunday afternoon in Swindon and you walked by. I'm sure you was with Pete and Arlene. I was so starstruck that I didn't say anything. I'm still starstruck now, but this time I will say hi from Keith. <laughs> hi there, Keith. Uh, <laughs> well, we were living up at um, West Swindon. Uh, mm. I've got him up there. So, we, I mean, we, Tony also, they, all of us lived there in the same place. I mean, when I came over in 84, I... I um, had uh, Phil help me out quite a lot, Phil Cramp. And uh, so when I I went up and uh, first time I met Jason, I think it was 11 or something. Okay. And um, he was playing around with his bike. And uh, yeah. he was, uh, so I was up there quite a lot with his family and that. So they That's helped nice. me well quite a lot. And uh, same with Jason. I mean, I we. Really, such a good friends as well. I mean, I, I remember, I can't remember what year it was, I was struggling with engines and um, Jason rode for pool and uh, we've been talking about that and he said, I got an engine in my, my van, my spare bike, you can try that one. So he lent me his, his spare engine 
on that night when we met Paul, I rode against him and I beat him with his bike. <laughs> so, so it's uh, Jason is, yeah, I love him though. He's, he's a good dog. That's nice. Um, I've got Dave Steele uh, from Facebook there. there. He's got racing there. Look. He's put, Per was such a hard but fair racer. And although that I was a mechanic in the Cradley Heath team, he was such a pleasure to watch racing and a real winner. Great to see you, Per, from Dave Steele. Looks like you mechanics there as well. Still thank, now, but... thank you. Um, yeah, well, I always try, though, it, as long as it was somewhere to, you know, it, I struggled it. I didn't have the best equipment in the beginning. I did. I couldn't afford it. I mean, I when I went over to England, I I had one bike and um, I, I I had half a bike and I hoped to to you know earn a bit more so I could get. So I had two bikes. So it it took me a while to get. You know, I remember I went up to Bellevue, the the old Bellevue, and um, first time I was there. I mean, I mean they went around. They went into the corner. They went. Okay, I don't know how many miles faster than I did on the <laughs> And then a few years later, when I came up there, I think I missed one point. There was such a lovely track to ride. When yeah. you had to ride with, so it was, so it was difficult though, but um, yeah. I don't know if that's uh, Ronnie that's come back up. Hopefully it might have been Ronnie's, but Merry Christmas to you and Per. So hopefully not, that might have been Ronnie. Merry Christmas yeah. to you, mate. Um, <laughs> Jason Colthorpe, but uh, which local derby was the fiercest per in the British League? Was it Oxford or Swindon in Reading? And were these meet uh, and were these meetings? Did you look forward to? Um, well, it was, I think it was a lot against Oxford. Though I mean, a Swindon, we were everyone. I mean, it was like uh, brothers, all of them. I mean, mm. we knew them so well at Swindon, and um, mm. uh, but. Oxford was another different story. I mean, it, it was so much harder to ride against them when they had hands, Cox and Wiggy, and mm. I mean, good team. And mm. we always wanted to beat them, but I think they they won more against us than we went against them. And uh, Oxford track was really tough to, you needed to gate good there, though. It was mm. and hard to, I remember I had some battles with them. Um, Hans, I remember when they came to Reading and um, Hans and Cox in the beginning when they were riding together, team, and Hans just stopped the race and let Cox come, you know, coming out of the house. He blocked you and did all that. And mm. uh, I think I met him in the second race and he was trying to do that, slow down the race to let Cox come inside. But I just went straight on the inside of him. And then when you know i missed the corner because i had so much high speed coming in <laughs> and then so he, he cut back but i at least i i broke up that five one and then hands came up to me after the race and said you know it turns left when you come into the corner so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coming in there so yeah yeah you got stuck into hands there also there's not many that did that too well so no <laughs> I like that, I like that racer. Um, Brian Bur uh, Butterfield, he's put, um, Per left his wallet on the car roof whilst filling up at Heathrow, and he raced back with Frankie Cox and found it in the gutter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like a few incidents with the wallet then, Per. <laughs> yeah, well, we had some, I mean, the cars, I mean, the, the, the trips we had in the cars mm. back, or to me, things it was you shouldn't talk about it really. Yeah, some special road trips, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All sorts of things went on in them days, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, but it was. I mean, I, I, I didn't hold the speed limit, sort of, uh, on the road. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you... Tramlin was um, Robin Tramlin, Jimmy's mechanic. Mm. When I came over '84, he was going with me to Ipswich because I didn't know it was no M25 or anything that mm -hmm. uh, it was I don't think it was that late but I had drove and then he sat there was breaking with his feet on I saw him you know, <laughs> yeah the old classic going the village and then he said stop the car stop I said what is it stop the fucking car 
So I went out, <laughs> I went away, went in and came back for six pack of beer and opened it and started drinking. <laughs> I couldn't manage to, to be in the car when I was driving. But, oh, that's yeah. brilliant. Bit of late breaking and all that sort of going on for a bit of the motocross late breaking. <laughs> I had to read in the, the newspaper upside down, pretending that we were reading the, the paper in the car. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, scared him to death, my sounds it. Um, right, we've got uh, Ben Ilsley's put, Per, you were and still are my hero. Watching you at Reading made it Monday's exciting. Hope all is well. What is your most memorable moment riding for Reading? Ooh. Oh. I think it when in the the league the first first year then ninety with mm-hmm. you know then sec uh, third in the final me won it and that was a really good year that that that's a memory that's uh, staying with me for a long time though it's they, very nice yeah All right I got uh, Colin Harold on YouTube's but hyper. Do you remember when they had a supercross track on the centre green at Smallmead and you had a bit of a crash on one of the jumps? Yeah. <laughs> they was on to me saying, uh, you have to go on the bike. You've been riding motocross here. Yeah, yeah. I've never been on the, on the supercross. You know, yeah, I jumps. Yeah. I, I normally do on a motor, normal motocross track, like yeah. jumps and that. So I didn't know how to do all these jump double, but I had to try though. So... Uh, I went, uh, it was a bank holiday Monday. We did, I think, Reading in the morning and then we went to Oxford afterwards. And uh, I went up and I thought, fuck, should I have first or second gear to make the jump? So I, I don't think, I, I just went on, on first gear and I, I didn't come up. I did just miss the bus. I landed with the front wheel on the top of the last jump. So I just went diving forward. And I, <laughs> Straight the bus. I almost broke my collarbone because I landed. Oh on my god! I had to try though, so it's yeah. <laughs> I like that bit of the old motocross is still in there. Um, there's no name registered on this one. Uh, good to see you, Per. Great rider. I was at Small Mead the night that you got the lap record in '87. Pretty sure it still stands today. I'd imagine it did. Um, you must have been quite sad as well, Per, when you obviously knew about the stadium went and stuff. It was pretty sad. Yeah, yeah, it was sad too. Mm. I mean, I, they needed to spend a bit more money on on the facility around the track. Mm. Though. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, it, it's sad though. I mean, it, Reading has been such a good team and uh, won a lot and uh, and just closed it down like they did. Sad, really. It's, um, but um, they 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 promised that they they were going to build. They were talking about it before they were going to close it down. But mm. they were going to make a new track not mm. far where the old track was. So, but obviously, it never happened. They built a big football stadium. Not yeah, there. yeah, they did. Yeah, I've been to that and the Jeski Stadium. I think it's called still. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was such a shame. I remember uh, there used to be a sort of a motocross stroke supercross track just down the road from the track as well. Because I remember practicing there once as well. And yeah, they uh, had sports, so they they mm. they built a training track as well, just mm. on, on the back side there. It's a shame, isn't it? That was a good little f- facility, like you said. I know the the stadium needed updated around it, but it was a nice uh, place to go. And everyone liked going to Reading. Yeah. Um, right, I've got Jason Colthorpe. But did you ever nearly sign for another club? Which you've mentioned Swindon a little bit. Uh, what other club would you have joined if you had to leave Reading? I would have been Swindon though, because it's. Uh, I love the track up there, and uh, if I was going somewhere else, it would have been Swindon though. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, I can't get over the fact that you could have been a Swindon rider. <laughs> Oh, nightmare. Who were the toughest riders uh, that you competed with in the British League uh, racing days, Per? Was there some, obviously there was a lot of other number ones as well as yourself, but was there specific uh, number ones that used to be really tough to race against in the British League days? Most of the number ones in every team. Was <laughs> yeah. so me and Sam, we had a lot of battles and um, mm-hmm. it was always 
uh, a bit. I mean, we got along really good. I mean, we met each other on the airports and, you know, when we're traveling that much. So it's all of the riders. I mean, there's one thing if you, you know, on the track, whatever you do there, but mm -hmm. there's on the track and then you, you're friends when you're outside of it. But we had a bit of a battle there in 92. I remember we, in the Swedish league, just before the world final and everything, we, he took me really wide and I just went through the fence and uh, I thought the season was over there. But after that, it, it, it was a bit, so I, I just told him that, I mean, I, I, I would get it back when when the right time comes. So it's nothing dirty, but I mean, it, you if you can do something, you know, you just do it, but nothing dirty though, but yeah. I put them in the black. Cool. Yeah, that's nice. Um, I've got uh, some, I'll basically, I'll bring up some pictures here for a minute, perfect. I'll look at, there's the, uh, I think it's the 87 Reading team there. Looks like it's at Swindon as well. Yeah, it could be, got, yeah. Yeah, it looks got, like. John, how did you get on with uh, John Davis as well? He's a great character. We've had, I've had him on and he's going to come on again at Christmas time. Uh, he's a great character. <laughs> yeah. I remember he, he always used to have, you know, the ammoniac, you know, the, the lifters and stuff, they sniff it before, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always used to go sniff it like that before he went out and holding a screwdriver, his mechanic had to hold it up, you know, like that and then grab it when it when he left it and stuff so he had all his you know things to do before the race i remember we went up to sheffield and um bill door i don't know if you remember in the the Pablis dad he owned the reading races oh yeah yeah he always had a pipe in his mouth <laughs> yeah so we were up at sheffield and then everyone said hey why don't ask Bill if he's sniffing this one? Like, so um, uh, John called him up and said, "Hey, smell this one." He said. So Bill took it up to his nose and he <laughs> did it three or four times. He said, what does it smell? And he said, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> "Pipe all the time." So he couldn't smell even that. I mean, it was, uh, it was... good fun with John. <laughs> yeah, good times. There's a nice picture there with, uh, is that Bobby Swartz in it, by the looks of it? That's in Adelaide. Ah, right. What was that like over there? It must have been a bit of experience going over there. 93. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I mean, I, I did, I just had this, um, they lent me the bike and that for for that meeting. And I think I rode that one in in Perth as well, because I did that one and, and another meeting in Perth. On the other side, and um, yeah, with such a big track. So, I mean, I, in the Perth, that that track there, I think it was f almost five hundred meter long. Big so old track, yeah. Big tracks, and mm. it was difficult. But yeah, it was it was it's good. I mean, the, when we went over there, ninety ninety one, there for the tour, Swedish team, it was we had a really good time. Yeah. Was... I remember that uh, Maureen Schooling, she speaks to me on Facebook yeah. uh, quite a bit. She sent me a lot of cool pictures from you from Nelsie. And... And he was her or her husband. Was... Yeah, he was involved, yeah. Organising the, with the bikes and everything. Yeah. yeah. Good times over there then. Good, lady, Good experience. Yeah. Good experiences. Yeah. Thanks to Maureen for the memories that she sends as well. Uh, right, I've got um, a nice cool little picture here look, from a... Uh, Reading and uh, Swindon days, lot on the old truck. I can see is that Mitch on the back with you, John and Jan, but is it? Yeah, Pierre and Jan. I can see Malcolm yeah. Holloway closest there for doing some hand waving. Bo Peterson number three there. Yeah, he was he was very good. I really enjoyed Bo Peterson at Swindon. Is that Harry Coppenham as well at the end there? Yeah, Harry Harry yeah. Coppenham, Phil Crump, Sean McConnell. That looks like maybe number seven. Yeah, and Tim Hunt. Tim Hunt number two, yeah. See yeah. Malcolm waving. Yeah. <laughs> Pearl Sorensen, maybe. Pearl Sorensen. Yeah, I yeah, got a cool one here. You and Mr. Golub. 
yeah. early days. Yeah. What was he like uh, racing with uh, Thomas? He was, uh, I don't know, the Polish rider in the beginning there, they, they have the tension to turn left in the middle of the straight and <laughs> they had all sorts of things to do when they were on the track. And uh, but I mean, they, they, especially in the beginning, you know, when they were there before they started, uh, now they have the best equipment you can get. But before the bikes and that, that they rode you, I mean, I remember they lent me a bike and it was vibrating and it was, you know, they didn't balance the wheels or anything in the beginning. So. <laughs> but um, they were hard though, to beat on their own turf. What was this uh, memory like? I see this was the one that Javi won because you were runner up in 92 no, as well. Two, yeah. Uh, it was, I, uh, well, I, that year, it was uh, probably the best, 92, probably the best season I ever done. Mm. Uh, I mean, I the first race I went out, it started, to, you know, they opened the sky and I was on the outside and I missed the start and I finished last. And then they stopped the meeting for an hour and a half, almost two hours. Mm. I remember, yeah. Raining so heavy. I mean, they should restart the whole the whole meeting instead. But mm. after that, it was um, yeah. Do you think? Do you think if it would have uh, been normal from the start, you obviously would have obviously had a lot better chance of obviously still uh, winning? You can say if and if. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of ifs, isn't there? <laughs> I mean, Javi had the. I mean, there was his night. I mean. Yeah, he was flying. Yeah, yeah he did good, and he he rode he rode really good. I mean. I mean, it, it's you can't say that if and if, but he was the best that night. Mm-hmm. For sure. Fair play to Javi. Uh, there's a nice one there, look. Is that yeah, two, yeah. 92 champions? Yeah. yeah. There's old Ray Morton there as well. And Phil Morris, he comes. I've got Phil on a couple of times. I have to get him on. He'd be good. Yeah, Phil. Uh, he's the man. Amanda, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I used to remember them gloves as well that you always had. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of riders that had them gloves. It was yeah, you know, it was uh, it gave away them quite a lot to all the riders. And uh, uh, right, so I think it, when you want to do the Golden Gala, mm-hmm. a lot of riders like Wiggy and all these, they tried out. We did the I can't remember what year it was. Wiggy was trying out. Was it Bellini, Bellini or they were trying out the new clutch? It was um, okay. The, the there had been a motocross clutch, mm. and um, Wiggy was going. He tried everything. Wiggy mm. was he, he's trying to develop anything, so he tried mm. anything, all that stuff. So yeah. he went on on the bike, and I was doing the practice start. So it's it's still the leaning forward and revving up really hard. I mean. <laughs> We didn't even move. It was just him and the bike just went wah bang. He ended up on his back. Jesus. It didn't work. It was just clip, you know, when he dropped the clutch. So anyway, he, he did the whole meeting and that and they, he had a neck brace on at the night there when we were out having dinner and that afterwards. Mm. And we everyone was taking a piss of him on the plane <laughs> yeah. when he came home. And he broke a fucking his neck in a place. So he's, he was so close to paralyzed. And Jesus. he still, that was just in the beginning. So he did the whole, if he just would have done, he could have just, I mean, gone paralyzed in a second if he did anything. But, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, bit, of a, bit of a scary one there. Yeah. Got some nice ones there. Look, that's you in full flow in 92. There's a bit of an older one here. Yeah. Nice, nice one here. Yeah, I think that's Ox. Is it Oxford or? Uh, I don't really recognize I see Jimmy, Tony, Peter, Henker. Is that Lundqvist is in front? Is that? Is that Dennis Lundqvist and Michael Blitz? Dennis Lundqvist, Blitz. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, it's a great Swedish teams you had over the years for sure. And there's obviously uh, winning the pairs there. Yeah. 
I had a shit really in that final. It was Did you? Yeah. So it was, but luckily the other ones are only three in the team, so yeah. That's good. Um, there we go. That must good. have been special up there. Yeah. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah, definitely. The old classic per wheelie at small mead. <laughs> I think that must have been uh, practice day or present yeah. practice. Got a good one here of you and Sam. Yeah, that's the world final. Good days with them. Yeah. Looks like someone's got a nice uh, program boards. They used to do a lot of the old painted program boards back then. I used to love them. Yeah, they were nice. I mean, they, very nice. Yeah, they did on all the riders. It's really nice though. How, how good they are to do them though. It's mm, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to still try to get hold of some now. It'd be nice. Memorabilia's. What's going on here then, Pa? It's the parade. We're going around. I mean. Taxi company that was sponsoring the teams. If you're going something, I mean, taxi took you from wherever you were to to Warsaw to get uh, the to the meetings and stuff. You know, so yeah. Got the old no fear hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did they sponsor you, Pearl? Yeah, they did that one year. There was a bloke who was importing in stuff from no fear and bad boy you start uh, yeah so. yeah that's quite cool back then wasn't it got a couple of nice little racing ones here that uh, uh, mono ah uh, yeah and then i got a nice one here at reading as well yeah did you get nice. used to get do you used to get sponsored by them per premier helmets i remember you used to wear premier helmets quite a bit yeah i mm. uh i got helmets from well a dealer in sweden first but after I think Armando helped me a lot. I mean, it, we went down to the exhibition and that every year to Milano, and you went around to see all different sponsors and stuff. And Armando helped out a lot, though. I mean, he he's been helping a lot of speedo riders to get sponsors and stuff because they had so many companies in that down in Italy. So uh, yeah, very cool. Yeah, got a bit of an older one here. That must have been shit. Where is that? Is that? I think that might be you on the inside, isn't it? Is that Eric Gunderson maybe next year? No, that's not me. That this is an old one. That's Eric. That must have been. Okay, is it Kenny Carter there in the back? It looks mm. like he's. Maybe Tatum. Maybe looks like maybe. I'm not sure. Well, it might be Carter. Yeah, it looks like it's Levers, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Sure on that one. It's a nice one. Yeah, that's from uh, Wroclaw practice. Got another uh, nice one of the team. Olivia, yeah. I think we beat the Danes there. Yeah, Good memory. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, that, was, that, was that lucrative to win that per, was it? Or? Nah, yeah, yeah. It's all, I mean, it's one of the biggest meetings, so it's... Mm. But uh, you got uh, Speedway. I mean, now the bikes are all right, but when you got you on a, a Java bike there, it didn't even start. It was brand new, but <laughs> it didn't start. Pushed me around on it. You no, know, but uh, yeah, big crowd and massive meeting. Yeah, Take. yeah. Very cool. Is you and Tony in action? Yeah. Nice one in there. Nice one at the start. Is that Poland, is it? Yeah, it's a league meeting somewhere. I think it's down in Kursk or for a long pair meeting with it, I think. I used to like them uh, Premier helmets you used to wear. Yeah. It's me and Jimmy. Yeah. Good old days with Jimmy. There's another one with Jimmy. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember one year we... Me and Jim, Jimmy did uh, the world pairs and that for Sweden. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't qualify for the Swedish pair final, me and Jimmy, because that <laughs> year, the, the team that was lost up until one, I think it was 
June or something. Couldn't mm. do the last. Couldn't do it. so. We were lost that year, and uh, we can do the the Swedish Pest final that year. And there was a lot of writing newspapers and stuff about it that we yeah, had to do it and that. But that's the way it is. I mean, rules are rules. So. Yeah, yeah. There's a bit of an old one. Yeah, it's a test match against Denmark in Vestavik, I think it is. It's pretty cool. I see a lot of riders there still gnarling in the middle. That gnarling, is it? Yeah. He was, he, he was, yeah. wasn't he? <laughs> That's a nice one. That's from uh, Long Beach, California, 88. Uh, was that like the, was that the team thing or not? Yeah, team thing. I, yeah. I, I had a run off there with uh, Tatum for the ah, yeah. bronze medal. And he was so sure that he was going to beat me in that race. But was it? I beat him from behind. He made That's... his and uh, took me a couple of laps to pass him. Do you like that track? It was nice. I mean, I, I was there 85 as well and uh, didn't have the equipment to ride it, but that year I had something to ride with and it was such a big difference though, if you got something that you can make use of. Yeah, with some speed. There's a nice one of you and Rick Miller there. Yeah, it's his testimonial again there. It's pretty cool. There's another one that looks like it's probably during a meet in another wheelie there. Yeah. <laughs> you see the track there, some dirt on it. Yeah, I was going to say, so that's the first thing I looked at, is that a bit of, nice bit of dirt there. Nice. Just how you liked it there, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah that's that's cool. nice to ride it's, uh, that's nice. Look on the front, nice on the front of the Speedway Star. Yeah. Is that? I quite like this one. I've got it on the background actually, the actual interview as well. It's quite a cool one. Was that what you had a like a card put together where? After yeah. Running? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's really nice. Right, let's get back to seeing what everyone's saying. Uh, we've left everyone's questions behind for a minute. There'll be loads going in there now. Right, uh, was there one of my own? Was there a certain bike or engine that you rode over the year uh, that you had a bit of a favourite engine or anything that you used to like yeah. using or? I had a, a Java that um, from '85, and um, it was uh, a bloke, Jan, Jan Johansson in Vestavik. He helped out doing a lot of stuff for the engine for Jan as well. He made parts and stuff, and he, he helped me doing an engine. And uh, that bike, I think, I used. I, I mean, I all the threads or anything you can put in the bolts in it in the end because <laughs> it's so much and uh, I remember I had it to do a long track I did long track 89 and um, I had it in Esbjerg in Denmark and it was I mean I just geared, geared down geared down and it, it was still revving and it all of a sudden I was practice the fucking thing the rod <laughs> went through the whole thing and I mean, the tears just come. I mean, the oh. only you can rely on. So it's, mm. yeah. That was not cool. <laughs> mm. Right, we've got some uh, Jason's cold thoughts, but uh, there seems to be a shortage of young Swedish riders coming through to England. Is that because of fewer riders or do they want to go to Poland instead of England? No, I think they, they would prefer to ride anywhere. I mean, if they, mm. they could, but uh, the thing is, is, it's hard for them to fit in a team. And I mean, to buy all the equipment you need to have, if you say go to England, you have to have maybe two bikes there when you go over there and then have one in Sweden if you have to, because we have to go home and do the, the Swedish league as well. So it's, it's a lot of money they have to invest in. And then they come over and then they do a couple of meetings. And if it's not going that good, you get sacked. And then you spend all the money to do all that. So mm. it's, it's a gamble. But I mean, it, it's always been, but it's been tougher and tougher with, I mean, when they, before you had a team and if you, they let you ride, I mean, you have to, to lose before you can win. So mm. you have to give them the confidence to, to, but I know, I know the, the promoter and everything. I mean, they, mm. it's like I've been team manager and they're, 
in Sweden, I mean, everyone was complaining about riders. And I said, we have to let, we have to lose to start before we can win. So mm. let's give them the confidence and help them out. And then all of a sudden, if they ride enough, get more experience and everything, then they get better. But they don't get better or progress anything if they just go and do one meeting this week and then you have to wait two or three weeks until you can have another ride. So mm. you need to be uh, continue to ride in uh, quite often to, to be able to progress. When you did the team managing side, did you what did you uh, think of that part of it, Per? The other side of the fence, did you enjoy that or not? Or? Yeah, I had I had a good time. I mean, I, I've mm. been house the week for Ross Pig and I when I was there. I think we won two and uh, second or third. So we we were it was it was good fun though. I mean, I, I always try to you know to to make everyone because it's. The, the thing with Speedway is that mm. you work with so many different teams, English, mm. Polish, Danish, and this, um, to make them feel like that when you come to your team, that they feel like they're at home. This is where I can relax. This is where I'm comfortable and everything like mm. that. Mm-hmm. That's an important thing to make make the riders feel like they, they're wanted and, and uh, you know, to help them out as much as you can. And, so yeah, it was good experience. It was difficult, way. I mean, for me, after my injury and that, to mm. we did a lot of stuff. You know, asking me if I could help someone out. You mm. know, try and that. But to put some, the the thing is, you can go on the bike and you can show them to do it. But mm. put in words and to to explain. Some some riders can take it if you tell them what to do, and then you, and someone they they go out and they they try it, and someone else they don't do anything that you told them to do. But if mm. you go out on the bike and you show them, sometimes you have to show them instead of words. So it's difficult how how different people, you know, take it in. So it's. it's um, obviously, with the uh, with the accident and everything, Per, what was uh, your memory of that time and everything? What uh, actually happened and everything? Um, well, I the track was um, I remember the track was so slick and that that day, mm. and um, I mean to start with the, before the meeting, we I was going to do this meeting in in Bitgush on the Sunday, and mm-hmm. this was before it was Midsummer's Day. It's big celebration in Sweden and I was home and I wanted to stay home maybe not to do that meeting because I stay home with the kids and that and uh, mm-hmm. have a bit of a weekend off but um, all of a sudden we, we decided in the end that we should go so so we took the van and then went down and then halfway down in Jön shopping halfway down to end of Sweden there and you start we uh, started had trouble with the van, so we had to, you know, go under it and, and grease it up. Or, well, we had some problems. We got it going in the end, and we just made a boat. When we came on on the boat, they closed the door straight away, and then and then go down and um, we struggled to get to the meeting, and we, we got there, and it was so warm that, that day, and. Um, we started off really good. I mean, our team, and then I think halfway through in heat eight, eight or something, one of my teammates he crashed so bad. I mean, coming up on the straight, and he went from full gas to dead stop because he hit the fence on the straight. Oh, yeah. um, they we had to wait because uh, I thought he died because he he hit you know his uh, throat on on the handlebars and that. So he was. And uh, so it was really bad. But they, mm. they, were, they were going to, to stop the meeting. We had to wait two hour and a half or something for ambulance and stuff like that. And um, well, I when I went out, I was on gate four and trying to come in, and I just had a bit of a push. And it was so slick that you know, defense in in Poland as well. The, it was. Well, it didn't bend or anything. It was like going into concrete. So I slid it in, and then 
it wasn't that bad of a crash. It's just that the bike went, it hit me and the, the engine hit me in the neck. So uh, that way, and then all of a sudden when I, well, I, when I woke up and I looked up and then my mechanic, my cousin was mechanic for me and I said, I can't feel anything. I, it's just burning inside, you know, my, my whole body was just, uh, but my, my first thought was when I, when I lay there, I, I thought, fuck, this is, because I've been riding so much and I thought, oh, wow, I haven't been injured or having a day off from Speedway, if I, even if I've been sick or nothing. So um, I'm still in there. I probably just broke my leg or something, I thought, in the beginning. So, but um, after that, we, well, they worked on me a bit on the track and then I, woke up at the hospital there and the doctor stood in front of me and said they, they had to operate on me now straight away if I'm going to be able to walk again. Yeah. And, then, and then I spoke to, to our team manager, Bussi Virbrand, about it and he was talking to doctors and stuff, what to do. And, and this doctor there just, he was at University Hospital there in Bidjers. And uh, he just said that, well, we have to do something, we have to do it straight away. So um, I just, well, I said, well, let's do it then. So it's, but um, how it went and how they did operation and stuff, I, I, I'm not speculating anything in it. What's done mm. is done. Like, mm. I threw away the back mirror a long time ago. What happens has happened and nothing mm. I can do. So it's, but uh, it was a big journey. After that, though, but um, yeah, hmm. yeah, it's a shame. Um, but uh, Brian Buff Butterfield's got a uh, funny one here, by the way. That's a bit per a bit of a reminiscing of uh, another trip here. One time, me, Per, Jimmy, and Tony Olsen were en route to Norden in Germany. I was driving at around 100 mile an hour on the auto. <laughs> Per got bored and decided to climb out of the window across the roof and in the back of the car via the rear window. Tony nearly had kittens. Me and Jimmy were in stitches. Crazy times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was a bit boring there. So I, I think we had the trailer and I climbed out the window and then I jumped from the roof over to the trailer and sat on the bike and I went back again. And... <laughs> <laughs> you guys got some crazy stuff on them trips <laughs> uh adam winslet put there did you know the swedish hard man hacking carl chris was three times motocross world champion as well yeah i met sure him you knew that yeah a few times so it's um i was a tough hard hard, hard bloke mm. yeah. um yeah sad passed yeah, away very sad he had uh he, he wasn't feeling that good in the end, though. He so much pain in his body and stuff. He's so many crashes and stuff he'd done. And so, yeah, nice bloke, though. Yeah, very nice. Great rider. Um, Andrew Pollard on Facebook put, Hi, Per. You must have had, you must have many great memories throughout your brilliant career. But what memory stands out the most and still makes you smile today? Best wishes to you as well. Thank you, Andrew. Um, well, obviously, it's the the, um, the world final. I mean, it, that's the main goal, though, what you have and what you dreamt about even since you were a kid. And, um, but they, I mean, I, when I won the under 21 there in 85, it was um, very good running, me and Jimmy. I mean, we, we were first or second all through from the qualifying, from the quarterfinals, semifinals, and, and the final. And um, so it was, um, that was a good memory as well. Mm. But um, no, nah, the world final must be, and all the, I mean, the league meeting, winning that one at Reading was... Uh, Reading was nice, yeah. I've got an interesting question here from uh, someone named himself Nervo63 on YouTube. Uh, is it true, Per, you wore the unfashionable plastic face mask? I think it was Scott, maybe. I think it was. 
uh, in the 90 world final purely to distract other riders? <laughs> well, I, I just tried to do something different and uh, just like you normally don't. And um, I think uh, Eric was a bit of an influence as well. He had that for a year. And I'm, uh, I think Amanda did it as well and had it. Uh, did, uh, I remember, yeah. Yeah, so a few writers had it, and mm. I just thought of doing something different just for, so, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I remember a lot of the Mercross riders were using them at the time, around that sort of time, 1991 as well. Yeah. Um, did you have any favourite sort of levers or anything that you wore, Per? Did you have a favourite? Did you keep any? Couldn't afford to have many levers. You had one. You had to travel it with you back and forward and clean it during the night and keep it, you know, so it's... Um, now the GTS I had in the end there, they were, they were really good. It was, uh, I had Cobra, a lady from Swindon, who was oh. making this as well. She, on that picture there and that you have in the background there, when I'm oh, riding right. Cobra, oh, right. she did That's a really cool. as well, yeah. That's very cool. Um, I've just got uh, Skip Donahue Productions come back on again from YouTube. He put, Do you remember the bungee jump you did at Rick Miller's testimonial? I don't know how I could do it. I'm, I'm scared of how. Yeah, same. <laughs> you can go up on a ladder. You know, Jesus. I don't watch movies either. So, I mean, I when, when someone. But, uh, yeah, well, if someone challenged me to do mm. something, that's, they shouldn't do that because... Then I could do anything if you if you challenge each other to do something. So yeah, yeah. About, Is that your uh, competitive spirit? In... Yeah, well, you have if someone asks you to do something, you know, to challenge you, or if it's something like that, then I'm doing it even if I'm scared. Or but um, yeah, then <laughs> I could see all the way down to London when I was up on that crane. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, yeah, still, what the fans of that? Yeah. Fair play, fair play. Um, did you uh, keep any of your uh, levers or cavalars and everything? Did you keep any race jackets or anything like that? Do you keep anything like that? I've had, I've had loads, but I've given them away. I mean, yeah. it, well, they're having them in, in the bag or something. So someone mm. else, you know, I've been giving away. And uh, so, um, yeah, I kept some of them. But the leathers that I had at the world final, I, I kept. So it's, uh, I, nice. I put it at a museum in Vestavik in Sweden. Uh, so I'm going to have it there from, from this year. Did you have any uh, superstitions um, during your career, Per? Did you have any weird ones? <laughs> no, not really. But I remember Reading, you had to do in certain order. I mean, when it came... We unloaded the bike. I sat down. I did my goggles. Brian went over to get the coffee. We had to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, so more, more routines than superstitions. Yeah, more routines than superstitions. Yeah. <laughs> Brian's <laughs> Brian's just come on and commented and said, "I can still hear Per screaming from that bungee jump." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plenty of screaming on the way down was ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Fair play to do it. Yeah. I was, I've talked to a few of the riders from uh, the sort of 80s, 90s, that sort of era of the riders. What was the old... I've, I've heard bad stories about some of the changing rooms in the British League. Oh, <laughs> Can you remember some? Oh, fucking red. The one at Reading, that, the best. I mean, where I came. Uh, you couldn't close the door and the, the shower was electric and if there were three or four were there and then maybe one or two was working and it was you know, standing outdoors you now is i was yeah not very good but, uh, <laughs> there's i think they i think most of them would agree i mean bradford up there when they had rugby or something yeah. i mean they had good engine rooms mm -hmm. but often i mean it became some tracks it was dogs and that and they did I mean, dog racing, uh, ground, mm. and theater track, and they didn't, I mean, the dressing rooms wasn't, I mean, I, 
even I, I remember when I went to Denmark and stuff like that in the beginning, they didn't even have changing rooms. You just changed by the car and then, you know, like you do a motocross and that, you know, you have your van or whatever. But uh, yeah, in Sweden, it's always been, I mean, they, they clubs and always some bigger facility nearby that you go in and change and that. But mm. <laughs> yeah, change room was not the best. No, no, not good. Oh, I've just got uh, Maureen come on. So she's obviously an Aussie and she's put morning. So she's obviously morning in uh, Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Morning, morning, Lee Ashby and Per Johnson. Morning, Maureen. Uh, she's put, you look so well. We have many memories from you racing in Australia. Uh, Aidan Higgins really enjoyed looking after you on the second tour. Uh, Wayville and Perth tracks. It was good to see you in Stockholm 2005 track where you were team manager. Do you still have any connection with the riders there racing? Uh, in Sweden or... I presume she means the connection from the Stockholm track, is it? Yeah. Well, they, they closed it down. Uh, mm. Gana closed down and it got to be Hammerby after that. And um, they don't have that one either anymore. So it's it's sad, though. But, I mean, some of the riders that were there, I uh, still well, have contact with most of the riders when I... Often when you go to different meetings and that, when you, mm. it is, it's like, I'm not there f to watch the speed or really. It's like when the Grand Prix and that are here in Sweden. Mm. Or whatever. Mm. I'd rather go there on the practice day or, but never on the race day. I watch it better on, on TV. You can see it more. But when mm. I are there, it's more that you want to meet up with people and talk mm. to them. So it's... Mm. It's a good opportunity to meet up with all the friends. Do you watch uh, most of the GP racing now, Per? And do you enjoy the GPs? What do you think of it? Yeah, we watch it quite a lot. We have uh, a few of us having, yeah, we're betting top four and that. So it's, yeah, yeah, uh, a bit of a competition going, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's like I mean, you know which ones are, but it's the same yeah. when you know, horses or greyhounds or whatever. You don't know though. It uh, depends on the gate or wherever you get but, um yeah i mean I, I i i would enjoy to do the the grand prix i mean mm. it, um it's a good, a good thing though i mean i when they started to get in on bigger events and uh into town more like they have you know it's um i mean it, it made the sport a bit more presentable to to mm. others so it's uh, yeah. yeah it's, I think it would. I think it would have suited you, Grand Prix Speedway. Um, you were always very consistent as well, so it obviously would reward the consistent rider over a GP series. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, you can see that you don't have to win all the meetings to be mm. exactly. Yeah. If you're there in the final every time, and mm. it's easier to. But uh, mm. yeah, but it's. This year has been a bit different, so it, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be a bit changed. Before you, now, you can see more than maybe six riders that are there all the time, and uh, mm. so it's. Uh, yeah, they they turn it down to six riders that go through as well. So I think it's going to be a bit more interesting to get mm. in more new riders. So, yeah. Yeah, be, be interesting. Um, obviously you won uh, multiple uh, Swedish championships as well, uh, Per. What was your memories of them? Was that special still to be Sweden champion as well in your national country? And that, to win the Swedish fight is Swedish, you mean? Mm -hmm. um, I think it in in the eighties, beginning or nineties. There, it was a bit quite um, prestige to, to win mm. the Swiss final. But mm. now they, I don't know, it it's, doesn't feel like it before. I mean, it was a big event, you know, Swedish final and that. And mm. now these days it's not, not that much people come and watch it. And it's not any, you know, before if you were a Swedish champion, it was a big thing, but now you have to have bigger stuff you know, to be more international 
than to be a Swedish champion. Obviously, with your mechanics uh, back in the days, you used to uh, obviously you have to have a lot of trust with them guys, and obviously good relationships. Hopefully, uh, Brian's listening. Yeah. <laughs> Was he one of your uh, top men? Yeah, I mean, I Brian when he he did my in the end, I think he started off uh, ninety. Yeah, I started. I had my bike. He, he we did his garage shop, so he could do do the bike, you know, in his own time and cleaning them. And I mean, they were spot on every time when, when we went to meetings and stuff. So it's, I mean, it, them days when it, you did the world final and that you had to take bikes. I mean, I obviously I had three bikes in Sweden and I had two in England and that. And uh, we took the bikes from England as well. I mean, they, they were well looked after. They did a great job on them. Yeah, Brian. Top job, Brian. Um, did you have any uh, sort of regrets from like any teams you rode for over the years? You wish you hadn't, or wish you'd had rode any other teams? Was there any sort of regrets like that in your career? No, nah, I, I don't like to change. I mean, I it's the I did obviously you ride to to earn money. It's, it's a work, but I didn't care that much about. The money really that's why i don't have any money today but uh, i if i enjoyed being there the people that was there i mean i i take i could get more money otherwise other places in that if i wanted to but i wasn't interested in that i, I mean you get in if you want to be in a team you should be with people that you enjoy being in them um, working as a group when you're in everything around it as well so uh, um yeah i remember we i did a meet poland was really special i mean normally before they you couldn't stand next to the the opposite team you had to stand quite far apart you couldn't go and talk to the other team because if you talk to them they thought you were you know paying them to to win races or whatever oh. I remember went to to Salona Gora, me and Terry and my cousin. He was working for me now. We came down. We were quite early, so we sat there in the cafe. And this blow comes up to me and says, "Mr. Johnson, um, um, you like track? Oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, um, I couldn't. Uh, I don't know how he was struggling to get it forward. And he said that." We, if I could lose some points, I was going to get paid. Moralski was, he was, I mean, he, he had so much money. He was on really, mm. ridiculous, really. And uh, he said, if you lose three points, oh, yeah, I think they, he was going to pay me, I think it was 10 or 20,000 Deutschmarks for losing points. I mm. said, now, if you want me to ride for you, I can ride next year. We can talk about contract next year, I said. So, uh, so he walked away, and we sat there. I said, "Fuck you!" Know, I never heard anything. Someone comes up, walking to drop points, like, and it paid. And then, um, anyway, it took about half an hour. It comes up again. He says he was going to give me, I think, thirty-five thousand Deutschmark. How much money is that? Then it's done for. Around twenty two thousand pounds to lose Jesus. for a couple of points. <laughs> I just shook my head and said, "No, if you want me, if you want me to score points for you, you can call me in the winter. Maybe I can ride for you next year." But uh, no. So in the end, the meeting started, and I had a fucking puncher when I was leading, and I dropped three points. And uh, after the meeting, when I was going to get paid, well, you had to go in. They had a big coach. They came all, you know, the sponsors and mm. yeah, that that was paying you the money and that. And I had to sit there and then I had to explain every points that I took and why I did that and why I did that. So I, I sat for about an hour and explained to him. And I, I was open. I said, yeah. He came up to me and he asked if I. Yeah, you know, I could lose some points, but I mm. 
I had a puncture. So that's what they were arguing about if I did that on purpose. Mm. But no way I would, you know, get paid to drop points. I, well, so that was quite strange. <laughs> that's just, a weird one. I was like, fuck, did he say that? I mean, there like, was, that, yes. that, there was always so suspicious when you talk to the away team when you were somewhere. They came up and said, no, 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 come here, come here. I couldn't talk to Jimmy or Hans or if we met up or whatever. Like they thought that we were, you know, maybe doing something, you know, in between. Doing a deal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a great story, though. That was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, lots go, lots, lots go on, and lots of weird stuff goes on, doesn't it, Per? Yeah. Well, we had some, some, <laughs> but uh, we had some trouble when we were in Australia and. Yeah. yeah, we had done a few things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some good things, was it, Per? <laughs> yeah, well, we, we got caught for speeding, but uh, <laughs> we, were, we were going down to Newcastle from, we were staying at Brisbane at the Gold Coast, and um, we took a coach and went down, and it was rained off. So we sat on that coach for about, 18 hours you know going up and then we we're going to do that meeting re re again and um we said oh, fuck we take two cars and then we drive down because they they took the bike on a on a coach that quick snack had arranged so we all we had to just bring our letters and stuff and they took the bikes to the tracks so we sat there and said yeah we take two cars yeah. and no one wanted to drive I said, well, fuck, I drive one then, I said. And then Busse, our team manager, was very bad, I said, oh. and he took the other one. Okay, so everyone was satisfied. So we were driving down, and I mean, in the middle of the night, and we did the meeting. And then we're going home, it was middle of the night, and we were driving, and I was in front, and Busse was behind me. And it was quite curvy roads up and down. So I shut off the lights going into the corner, so I, I could cut in, so if, 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 if a car or whatever. So anyway, it was going, and then I looked in the mirror, and I said, fuck, it's a car behind buses. Doesn't he see that one? Because he came closer and closer. So I was looking at that, and I started to slow down. Oh, fuck, all of a sudden, there was a car in front, a police car straight over, mid over the road. So they stopped us, and there was a police car behind as well. So they came from two sides. And this, yeah. and um, he came out. We went out of the car. Me and Busse went out, and he came up. And he was so mad about how fast we were driving on the road, and that. And he thought, "Fucking, he's just driving a bit fast. That's nothing." So, anyway, so yeah, you and you in the car. So we had to go in the police cars, and um, well, the other, the boys had to take the car anyway. So. We went in the car and they, they took us to the nearest police station. This was out of the middle of nowhere. We didn't know where we were, but anyway, it was this small police station and coming in there. And then me and Bussa had to go up and sit, you know, like Wild Western, you know, when they had the bars around you, you had to sit up there. So we sat up there and then this policeman, he was writing down all the laws and about, you know, speeding, blah, blah. and. He said there was so many people have died on this road because they've been driving this fast. And, and said, can we can we call um, our promoter that's doing this and call him and see what he says? See, yeah. So they called him up and uh, Busi talked to, to him and they said, well, we I can't do anything. He's so mad about you know we'd be speeding and everything. So we had to stay there. And then all the other boys came around. They laughing and still standing around. <laughs> you know, and they said, ah, and then we said, you have to, you have to go because they, we had to stay. So they took me and Busse, we had to go up and fingerprints so with the fingers, taking off uh, our arm uh, belts and everything. And then they took it out into a, a big room, like, and it, I don't know how wow. big it was, but there was, we had to stand in there. They locked us in there anyway. And, uh, we sat there and just looked at each other and thought, fuck, we've just been speeding. <laughs> like, ridiculous. Anyway, so 
we sat there and then in the morning, I think it was about six or seven o'clock, bloke, a couple came out and then he took us out and he had a king cab, you know, uh, a van, a small minivan with a bar in the van, you know, like you can have dogs. And that. So we had to sat, the sat and stay in the back. <laughs> I mean, looking at each other, I thought, fucking hell. We couldn't even sit inside the car. We had to sit <laughs> in the cage, like, <laughs> the nearest town. And they they opened this big garage door and they took us in and then locked it again and then took us out because we were going to, to the courthouse. So they locked us in, in, in uh, two different ones first. And then... Oh, we anyway, we got together and then sat there and then there's a lot of criminals around in this police station. Mm. They were screaming and shouting. And we just sat there looking at each other. I thought, this is surreal. This is not happening. And then he comes up and he says, yeah, Mr. Johnson, the lawyer. So we had a lawyer that we, we were going to talk to. So I went in first. So I sat there. We couldn't be even in the same room. It was just a small window. So I could talk to him through it. And he said, hey, listen, this is what you've done. You've been speeding so and so and blah, blah. And he said, you can get up to nine, nine months in prison or get fined. I said, what? Yeah, you can get nine months in prison for what you've done. So anyway, I went back to Boston and said, fuck, we can get nine months in prison. <laughs> and then he went and they talked to him and uh, came back and then we sat there and then they're going to take us to the court. So they drove us back. They took us in, in this van again, in the cage and sat there. And another criminal came in who was going to the courthouse as well. So he sat next to us and he's just looking around, see if he could find any cigarettes under the seats there or something. And he looked at us and he said, eh, what's you guys done then? Have you shot a cop or what? He said, no. We're speeding. And he said, what? Yeah, they say the same thing. So he came up to this courthouse and um, we sat there and then it was our turn. We went up and we sat on, on the side of it and there was, I think it was six judges or something with wigs on, you know, like they have in the... <laughs> and then they started saying, oh, New South Wales, blah, blah. And then they called my name and I had to stand up. And uh, he said a lot of things. And he said, um, I got to find $5,000 Australian dollars. And then he clapped. So I only had to pay the money, no jail. I'm um, yeah, yes. And they both said, got his sentence. And said, yes, I didn't give a shit. I didn't get any prison anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He, and he had the same thing. He, he you know, had to pay the money. So after that, we went out and the, this policeman has taken us in this cage that we've been going now, we, we, because we're going back to the police station to pick up our bags. So he was started to climb in this cage and he said, no, 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 you can sit in the car. All of a sudden we've been in the fucking cage. <laughs> All that shit. So, upgraded, uh, upgraded, did you? <laughs> yeah, so anyway, you got back to the, Got the bags and went up to this lawyer, waiting for um, Trevor Harding to to come and pick us up. And the lawyers, you know, started talking and says, "Oh, what are you gonna do, guys? What? Oh, are you gonna pay it or not? Yeah, of course, uh, we have to pay it. Yeah, but you're going home in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, but you don't have to pay it if you don't. And then we start. Fuck, we're going through all this shit." And then you tell us that should we pay it or not? So of course we're gonna pay it. And then on the way home, it was a long drive back in Bussy and we started so fucking five thousand dollars, a lot of money. Yeah. What should we do with uh, that? Uh, in the end we we didn't pay the money and we flew back home. No. And then <laughs> and then I I was asked to come down and do that meeting there in '93. Yeah. And I was a bit worried, you know, to go <laughs> down there again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had a bit of a uh, thought before I was going down. Anyway, I got down and I never, never been driving that careful. Seat belt on, <laughs> yeah. you know, speed limit, and that. 
So, but yeah. yeah bit of a scary, bit of a scary time then at the point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. Bloody hell. That's some bad stuff. Oh, we've had uh, old Paco's been on on uh, YouTube. He's put, unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to watch this live tonight, but I will watch it tomorrow to get more knowledge from my Uncle Per. I feel the luckiest man to have his help and support. Loads of love. Love you, Paco. <laughs> You're, when you watch the recording tomorrow, Paco, you'll see that we give we uh, had a little quick mention about you at the start as well, and that, uh, about a possible interview with you, so that'd be cool. Thanks for coming on, Paco. Uh, and then Brian put, obviously, from when you said about him, he's put, shucks, thank you. It was a privilege. Uh, such a good bloke. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Stephen's been on, put, uh, Gotland 88 was a great year for you, Per. Yeah, it was a good year. It's uh, I won the Swedish individual. We won the Swedish team. And we won the Swedish pairs. Me and Tony Olsen won the, the pairs. And I think the 80cc kid won that one as well. So it's, we won the mostly that year, 88 in Gotland. Uh, Adam Winslet put total legend. It's nice, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you obviously won a lot as a team rider and as an individual pair. Did you prefer to be part of a team or did you prefer to be in the individual meetings or did you like both? What was your... I liked it both. I mean, I, I um, obviously, yeah, I mean, I, I love doing open meetings and that, but same team, it's good to, to win something with the whole team. You more that, that enjoy it and, you know, that's a nice feeling as well. So, yeah, I like both of it. So. You won the British League Riders Champions as well, didn't you? Yeah, it's Swindon. Yep. It's... So that was 93, was it? Yeah. Cold. It was so cold that night. I was going to say, what was your memories of that night? Uh, can you remember, was, did they, was that the five-ride format? Yeah, five ride format. Yeah, yeah. Because it was they were normally like a, a world championship final them nights, were they as well? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it was a good night. But I, I all I can remember, I did run into the dressing room into the heater though in between. Rain, <laughs> oh, freezing. Did you? It's yeah. quite cold at Glens, isn't it? Quite uh, certain <laughs> times of the year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Is there uh, was there any riders that you didn't particularly like uh, racing with? Was there any riders that you didn't like enjoy racing? No, I can't say that. It's yeah. uh, some riders are different to ride with, and uh, it's yeah. you have to adapt, you know, to wherever you ride and what how they want to ride. I mean, I could ride inside, outside, it didn't matter. But it's easier to have control of the race when you're on the outside because. I remember in the beginning, in the teams, it sometimes if you have if you're going to start to help someone, you're on the inside, and all of a sudden they just hang on you and then block you, or riding out there and they come around you. That pisses me off. So mm -hmm. be on the outside and controlling the race a bit more. Yeah. Uh, Maureen just come on and she put, "Whoa, that was a surreal story." Re Speedway, unreal. Yeah. Anyone yeah. thought thought Per and Bossy had a robbed a bank? It must have felt like candid camera TV show was happening. Yeah. But now she put. Now, if you speed, you get a ticket or a fine in the mail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened to that blow, but uh, that oh, was, that was a bit of a scary one. Yeah. If you had to say Per, who were the, who were the best three riders that you ever raced against during your career? Could you do that? Difficult one. Yeah, some riders that I was uh, Lee Adams. I like mm -hmm. he, he has such a good, you know, perfect style riding. I mean, the hands. I mean, hands. The way he he rides the bike as well. He was uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I did, not when I was riding, it was, yeah, I probably look up to Hans quite a lot because I liked his riding style when he was, you know, he, he rode with a throttle in a certain way. He could 
ride when it uh, dirt on the track or slick on it and so that was but um, yeah I didn't I didn't have any you know idols in in speed where right? I think I mean when I was riding started to ride in 50cc and that obviously Bruce Pannell was was mm. the main then I mean his style and riding and I remember I first year I was riding 500 they had the test sweden had a test match against america and uh yeah. i did a wheelie competition with bruce at stockholm there so it's was... that's pretty cool yeah did you ever did you ever practice that because even from the pictures you see now from the 90s and all them sort of errors of times at uh, reading you always looked very cool with the wheelies did you ever practice that or was that, that just just uh, well, spontaneous yeah well well, I, I remember Torben Harrison, he was our trainer and helped us a lot. And when we were in training camp in the, you know, in the springtime there, we, he let us, you know, to, to ride, to do wheelies and that, because it helps you if you lift the bike going out of the corners or mm -hmm. so you can control it. If, you know, hit the dirt or lift or whatever. Take off, yeah. Don't shut off and that. So. But, um, yeah. Right, if you could give uh, some advice to any youngster per who wants to be a pro speedway rider, what would the advice be? First of all, I mean, I, I think to, it's an expensive game. I mean, mm. if you want to, if you want to really do this, you have to, I mean, really engage you to to do it to to put the effort down and train hard and. I mean, just to ride a bike is not enough. You have to, you know, take care of the physical and, and all that stuff. And and uh, really, you have to eat, sleep, and, you know, do whatever to, if you want to be mm. at And then I'm not saying anything about other riders that don't have the, well, everyone have ambition to be the best. But mm. in what grade you want to be the best in. If you want to ride, just, a good league rider or whatever, fair play. I mean, that, that's up to, but if you want to, to reach, to be the best, I mean, it, there's only one every year that can be the world champion. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you need to, if you want to be there, to be at the top, you have to put down everything. So it's, uh, but if you're not willing to do that, then I mean, it, it's expensive game and doing it then put it in a different level that's uh but it's not just that i mean i i remember my kids you know when they they enjoyed you know to be they were there looking at you know all the riders and i mean they they knew even uh off they were so small when i got injured but after that when i've been team manager they've been with me then they met all the top folks in there they thought, I mean, to ride speed, but okay, well, I get a bike, then I can ride with them and then, you know, be as good as them, but it takes more than that to to reach to be at the top. <laughs> um, Armando's just come back on. <laughs> He's wrote, uh, thank you, Lee, for having Brother Per in this beautiful live interview. I've loved it. Well done. And please tell her to stop swearing. Or he will be back in court again soon. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. We'll have to get you on, Amanda. We'll definitely have to get you on. That'd be really cool. But thanks for coming on as well live. That was really cool. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, I'll ask you a couple more, Per, before we go. Don't want to keep you too long. Um, is there any other sports you like watching, Per, other than Speedway? I like any sports. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm crazy about ski, cross country skiing, ski at long um, anything really, mm. except football. Don't I'm like not, football. No, I'm not that keen on that. I, no. I, I, I like more action, and I mean, I, I can watch anything because I, to be as good as they are, when you watch mm. athletics or whatever they do, and yeah. you know be the best there, how much they have to offer 
I mean, to train and to be there at the top. And that's what I like about it. And I mean, I can even get tears when I see someone, you know, when they win. Because I can be saying, I mean, when I won, when I did, I done achieve my goal. And I can yeah. see they are as well. And that that's that's a good feeling though to watch that. Yeah. Emotional, yeah. Yeah. Um what uh you're on uh actually i've remembered that uh, according to my uh stats and facts that i looked at you were were you the first rider to win the under 21 because i think they called it uh european under 21 at the time but it was basically the world under 21 it was australia and everything was it in the european land yeah did you were uh, so you were the first one to win the under 21 and the the main world title to have both i'm sure i got that written down I don't know if he was aware of that. No, I think uh, I don't know. Hmm. I think it was written down somewhere. I've seen it. I think it was on Wikipedia or something. So they're normally quite good with their. Yeah. We'll have, we'll have to ask someone that one. Yeah. Cool fact, if it is true. Um. And what? Uh, before we go, are you on? Uh, if you're on any social medias, uh, per if anyone wanted to give you a. Uh, a wish, a nice wish, or a nice uh, comment. Is there anywhere they could speak to you? I know you're on yeah. Facebook. I'm on Facebook, so it's uh, and on Instagram as well, and Twitter, I think. But I'm not that much of a. I mean, I I'm not that quick on writing and stuff. I rather call people and talk to them mm. because if I'm yeah. supposed to write something down, it takes me fucking ages to <laughs> bring down. It's just easier to call. Yeah. Well, Per, I'm absolutely honoured to be able to speak to you, mate. Uh, privilege. Uh, what a what a rider you were. Uh, top guy as well. Really appreciate your time, mate, and really enjoyed that. Yeah, and thanks everyone for writing in and asking questions and that. It's um, nice. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate your time, Per. So uh, look after yourself. I'll keep in touch with you and. Uh, I'll share this tomorrow and send it to you as well. If you want to share it on any of your social medias, everything would be great. So I'll, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks very much, Per. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Take care, Per. Speak to you soon. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Bye. Brilliant. Thanks. Awesome. What a top guy. Really enjoyed that. What a top man he is. Absolute legend of Speedway. Thank you for that, Per. Um, yes, before you go, people, I've actually got... Uh, thanks, Brian, and thanks for coming on. I uh, appreciate that, mate. Oh, and Stephen put it was Peter Narlene. I remember Peter Narlene winning the under-21. He was the first uh, under-21 champ. Uh, yeah, what my fact was, Stephen, was that I think Per was the first, as far as I was concerned, as winning the under-21 and then the main title as well, whether that's true or not. I thought I had that written down somewhere, whether that's true. We'll have to check that out, won't we? Thanks very much, Keith. Another good one. Martin Woodhead, superb, what a guy. I've got some real cool news for you people as well before you, before you go. Uh, obviously, if you've been seeing on my social medias and the competition Facebook page, I want you to like people and uh, get into my group, Motocross and Speedway Memories. That'd be really good if you guys can get into the group. That's where all the action happens. I've got the Chad Reed full kit behind me, you can see. Uh, tickets out for that now. Message me for that. But I've got some really cool news on interviews for you guys. You're going to want to hear this. So I've already confirmed this out on social media, but this Friday evening, I'm speaking to uh, motocross legend, Mr. Mickey Diamond and uh, American legend, two times AMA, 125cc outdoor national champion. And he went on and did uh, Supermoto and got an AMA title in Supermoto as well. But for all you Speedway fans that are on now, uh, amazing news for you guys. I haven't put it out there yet on social media. So this is the first to hear of it. Uh, this Monday evening, 7 p.m., I'm going to have the man himself, Mr. Ollie Olsen, on. So I uh, hope you guys will be looking forward to that one, I would, I would imagine. Mr. Ollie Olsen, who uh, also said uh, that Eric Gunderson and Hans Nielsen, superb interviews, both said that Ollie Olsen was their idol as well while they were growing up. Um, Paul Nye, cheers, Per and Lee. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Stephen Zettawar, superb chat, Lee, as usual. Big thanks, no problem at all. Pleasure. Maureen Schoolin, thank you, Lee Ashby and Perry Johnson, for this interview. Fabulous once again. 
We are so lucky to be able to see and ask questions. Cheers, Lee. No problem, Maureen. That's what it's all about, is sharing the memories. All of us people getting to speak to these idols and heroes of ours and getting your questions to these guys personally. Really cool fact, for sure. So, yeah, got Ollie Olsen. So, Mickey Diamond this Friday evening, 7 p.m. UK time. Ollie Olsen, Monday night, 7 p.m. UK time. And I've also confirmed tonight as well with another motocross one the following Wednesday. So a week today will be with Gordon Crockard, the top Irish motocross rider, three times British motocross champion, GP winner, third in the world as well. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that one as well. So that'll be Wednesday, 7 p.m. UK time as well. So, yeah, lots to look forward to, people. So that's really cool. Three interviews coming up next. Um, yeah, so people that want the enter the Chad Reed competition. He's now retired. Um, AMA Supercross champion. Um, second in the world in the GPs, world GPs as well. He signed the shirt. This was his uh, race gear that he used at the Matley British Motocross Grand Prix at Matley Basin in the, uh, the UK. Uh, and he signed the shirt. And then you can see the butt patch look with 2-2 on the butt patch with his Yamaha there. Hope you all notice my uh, little Christmas tree. I've got my little poppy for her bedroom in here that I'm in. <laughs> I put the lights lot on the Christmas tree, getting festive with the Speedway boots there of um, my dad and uncle Martin Ashby. We both use them Speedway boots. Still got the still got the steel shoe on and one of my uh, motocross helmets there. Uh, let's have a look what people are saying before I go. Nice one, Lee. Is this worth a shout out? It is indeed. Is that the Speedway Bill Elephant Fund, uh, Adam? I'm guessing that looks like it is. That's the Speedway Benevolent Fund that um, that they help out guys that have got injured. Um, so, yeah, go on then. I'm sure they normally, uh, I don't know if you're aware, Adam, they normally do a Speedway meeting at the start of most seasons in the British League or sometime during the British season and uh, collect for the Speedway Benevolent Fund. So that's always a cool thing to help out the injured riders. Uh, Martin Woodhead put call. I'm about to build an Ollie tribute bike, so that'll be really cool. Cheers, Liam Purr. Someone there not registered. I don't know that works. I'm afraid. Uh, Ollie Olsen will be good. Did you say Monday night? I did. Uh, so it'd be Monday night, which is, let me look, is the 21st. So the 21st of December, Monday night, 7 p.m. UK time. So I believe that's 8 p.m. Denmark time for Ollie. If anyone wants to know that. So, yeah, that'd be Ollie Olsen. Russell Williams, what an honest and down-to-earth guy. Great rider, too. Thanks for a brilliant interview, Pert. Yeah, what an absolute legend he is. Uh, John put, yes, Pert was first to win both. There we go. That was a cool fact. Dave Nash put, quality rider and top man. Thank you. He is indeed awesome to be able to speak to Pert. And Skip Donahue Productions put, whoa, Ollie Olsen, top manly. Yep. I'm really chuffed for that. I uh, Thanks very much to Eric Gunderson getting me in contact with Ollie. Um, I did chase Ollie quite a bit. <laughs> An actual fact, I will reminisce what he said to me on text. Uh, it's not every day you get to text three times world champions, is it? But so I'm getting a lot of these surreal moments <laughs> lately, <laughs> to be fair. Um, uh, I did laugh because what Ollie said to me on text, obviously I, I messaged him uh, my other interview, some links and stuff of Hans and Eric doing that, you know. I spoke to Eric, uh, Eric, he gave me your contact. Um, he's put, uh, this was yesterday. Uh, it's quite funny when I saw the, the reply, he put, hi Lee, uh, you seem pretty desperate to get me on your show, I must say. <laughs> As I see, they are very long interviews. Is this correct? And when, what time you plan to do mine? Give me a call. So I spoke to Ollie. And uh, I said, yeah, I uh, said, yep, yeah, definitely keen to get you on. I uh, said, I've got paper cuttings of you and my Uncle Martin and having great heat ones at Swindon. And then I've got one with a uh, picture of Ollie in front. I think he was with the Wolves then. And it said, uh, it might have been about 74, 75, something like that. And it said, uh, Martin Ashby goes on to pass Ollie and break the track record at Swindon. I've got loads of little things like that. And then he's put highly, yes, let's have a go on Monday, the 21st of December, 8 p.m. Danish time. And uh, said he'd be on his laptop and said to email in the link for the interview. So, yeah, really looking forward to Ollie Olsen on Monday. 
Awesome. Uh, <laughs> are your Adam? Are your interviews going to be in the TV, uh, Christmas TV Times? Great work, Lee. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm just going to check this message because I. Uh, right, okay. Just got a message from John Davis. So I was just looking to see what he said. So I will uh, actually mention that as well, which I've only just remembered. Jesus, I forgot about that as well. I've got so many things to announce. So obviously I've told you, I'm not Mickey Diamond, American AMA legend, this Friday night for the motocross fans. Uh, make sure you come and do your live, uh, into the live to view your questions, 7 p.m. Friday night, UK time. Monday, legend, Ollie Olsen, 7 p.m. UK time. And then a week today, 7 p.m. UK time, Gordon Crockard, three-time British champion, motocross champion, top Irish lad. Um, he's going to be on as well. And then also, Mr. John Davis, uh, we've been talking, obviously, about this uh, Christmas special Boxing Day evening, 7 p.m. UK time is the plan. Uh, John Davis, come back to me. So we're going to call it uh, JD and Friends on this uh, Boxing Day evening and so obviously we uh, know that so basically he's going to have one of his great friends neil middleditch everyone knows neil um great speedway rider um obviously went on to be manager very successful speedway manager uh, with paul pirates and um team gb as well still uh hangs that one in paul where he should have won the world cup there that time Still can't shake that one. We'll have to ask Neil about that one. Um, so he's coming on with John Davis on Boxing Day evening. And then also we've got two Americans that I'm sure you'll be interested in uh, seeing them guys interact with them as well. We'll be, uh, so it's almost like a race. <laughs> we'll have John Davis and Neil Middleditch from Team GB or England or whatever you want to call that. And then we'll have two Americans and the Americans will be um, Mr. Dennis Sagalos. So I'm really looking forward to getting Dennis on. I spoke to him a couple of times about doing an interview. So that'd be cool to get Dennis Sagalas on. And then also the plan is to have Steve Gresham on as well. So it'd be cool to uh, see him as well. I've got a story to ask Steve Gresham myself about my dad at Bristol when he was at Bristol Bulldogs. And I know he did come to Swindon very early 80s as well. Maybe when Scott Autry was there. Was it 80? Something like that. I think it was a bit young for me. I think I was about three. So I don't remember that, but obviously I've seen all the pictures, and so that'd be cool to reminisce with them guys as well. Uh, Gary Stead, whoa, that will be a hoot. Watershed, I guess. <laughs> yes, exactly that, Gary. We'll have to get you on as well, Gary. That'd be really cool. I think I did message you, actually. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, <clears throat> and also... It was a plan as well. This is what John Davis has just messaged me about. Uh, we was going to get on, uh, as he calls it, John Davis says he's JD1, and then there's JD2, Jason Doyle. Uh, he did tell me earlier today that Jason Doyle was okay for the Boxing Day as well. He was going to come in as well. It was like a bit of a special guest as well. That would have been a surprise. But uh, apparently he's not available now. But uh, he'll come on the next one, he's promised. So it looks like Jason Doyle is going to make an appearance as well. And obviously as a Swindon fan, that's quite cool. So that'd be cool to get JD2 on, as John Davis calls it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's certainly going to be fun on Boxing uh, Day evening for you guys. I'm sure that'll be really fun. Everyone's pretty much demanded a part two with John Davis. I think he's uh, still right up there with the records of the highest views on all the videos. So clearly everyone really enjoyed uh, John's openness, let's, let's say. <laughs> um <clears throat> Maureen's put, yes, please, Gary, we would like to see you do an interview with Lee Ashby. Yeah. Bully him into it, Maureen. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know if Gary saw that. Man. I did message Gary at some point. I can't remember. If it, was, it was fairly recent, maybe. I'm not sure, Gary. But I'm sure I did message you. Hopefully, we'll be able to get you on as well. So much to do. So many uh, riders to catch up with. Excited at the prospect of speaking to all these guys. Awesome. Really chuffed, really pleased. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed it this evening. Um, yep, yeah, I'm going to go and have some tea. So looking forward to Mickey Diamond Friday night, 7pm UK time. And then 
Top Man Ollie Olsen on uh, Monday night, 7 p.m., and Gordon Crockard on the Wednesday, 7 p.m., UK time. And then, obviously, I've mentioned about the Boxing Day bonanza, as we'll call it. <laughs> JD and Friends. But what a lineup that'll be, and that should be really cool. As my number say, really, really cool. So, buzzing for that. Uh, yeah, I've had all my hair chopped off tonight. Thank you, Jessica. Um, is there anything else I needed to mention? And John Westwood also messaged me on Facebook and put, yes, Per was the first to win the under-21 and then the World Championship. So that was right. My little fact was right. A few people have backed it up. So that's cool. Thank you for that. Right then, people. Uh, I think I've told you everything I need to tell you. Don't forget about the Chad Reed kit tickets behind me. Get at me for that as well. Any motocross fans on or any Speedway fans that like motocross? Supercross. Uh, Stuart Hare. Great stuff, mate. Great work. Thanks very much, Stuart. How are you doing? Hope you're good, mate. We'll have to have a chat with Lawrence. So many to do. <laughs> I'm a kid in a sweet shop, aren't I? Hope you liked all my little Christmas lights over here, look, for you people. Make it, trying to make it a little bit festive, look. <laughs> right then, people. I'll leave you with my uh, dad's... Um... Here you go, look. There's my uh, mouse mat and my dad, look. <clears throat> when he rode his last year in 1979. And all the riders sort of had these stickers. I think I've seen some of Malcolm Holloway, Andy Graham, that was dad's partner. Um, yeah, it says Mickler who did it, 1979, down that end. There, look. He rode for the Milton Keynes Knights. So, <clears throat> one of my dad's sayings, and he used to say it especially a lot before he uh, unfortunately passed away. He used to say, It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. So, thanks for that, Dad. I'm going to take that away with us. <clears throat> Unless they're really horrible, then you don't need to be. <laughs> Just kidding. Right. Good evening, people. Good night and God bless. And uh, I'll speak to you all soon. And I'll put this recording out tomorrow for anyone who didn't see the whole thing. What a legend, Mr. Perry Johnson. What a privilege to do that. Really cool. Very happy and very pleased. As you can see there, Lee's smiles back. Thank you very much for that, people. Speak to you all soon. Take it easy. Speak to you soon, people. Ciao, Bella.